It's Saturday afternoon, October 15th, 2016. We're here on Rivalry Afternoon at Darlene Stadium. It's Frank Edgar with Wube Gabray welcoming you to the broadcast of the Hampton High School Crabbers Phoebus High School Phantoms annual rivalry football game. Wube should be a good one. We got a 6 and 0 Phantom team and a 5 and 1 Crabber team. What do you expect? Uh, Hampton Phoebus, enough said, but uh, both both teams are coming in with great records. Hampton with that one loss to Heritage. Phoebus, of course, didn't play last week, but they're 5-0. and uh, Again, I say it every week, the playmakers are, are here, and we're going to have to see what playmaker can make the, the extra play to win. Well, there's a lot of playmakers on both sides of the ball. The one that got the news this week was number five for the Crabbers, Daz Newsome. Tell the fans a little bit about Daz. He verbally committed to the University of Maryland. Um, he went up there for a visit last week and loved what he saw, and he uh, committed to the Terps. And then on opposite side, the, the Phoebus Phantoms, their defense led by Jonathan Gregory. Gregory, nine interceptions in five games. I mean, in six games, so that's unbelievable. He has help, too. I mean, he has other, other guys that can make plays, but he's been the headliner so far with nine interceptions so far in this, uh, in this half, halfway through the season. And a couple of quarterbacks on either side. Neither one is the what I would call the star of right. the team, but both extremely important. How about the young man for Phoebus? Phoebus, Zermir Rogers is going to get this, the, uh, the start for the rest of the way this season. A junior, he came in when, when uh, Isaiah McNair went out. So he's going to be the man the rest of the way for the Phantoms. And he's, he's looked good. I mean, the last time we saw him, he had a great game against Kikitan. So he's going to be their man. He's young, but he's getting a lot of experience as these games go on. And the Crabbers go have gone with two quarterbacks. We'll probably see one more than the other. Tell the fans a little bit about DJ Nunn. DJ Nunn, the transfer from Warwick, he, uh, he's, he's gotten most of the snaps over Cam Stevenson, another transfer. But Nunn's a tall, lanky kid. He plays defense as well. So look for Nunn to be the uh, get most of the snaps but of course Stevenson might come in as well and we've seen Stevenson come in a couple times in the in the, the game we did broadcast and we also saw him play really well as a receiver yep. and on the defensive side of the ball he had an interception uh, the last time the last game we did it, along with none so both of them are good defensive players playing that quarterback position in the in the defensive side so Stevenson and none can both get snaps on the offensive side and they both play defense like you said well I had a chance to talk with coach Mike Smith uh, this afternoon and we'll see what Mike has to say about his two quarterbacks and other things I'm here with Coach Mike Smith at Hampton High School. Mike, beautiful fall afternoon for football. What are you looking forward to this afternoon from the Phoebus Phantoms? A battle. It's a battle every year, is it not? Most of them. <laughs> well, now, you had a good game coming in to this game. You, had, you defeated Kikitan last week 48 to nothing. So you look good on the scoreboard. What do you think of your team's play, you know, without looking at the scoreboard? Well, I thought we played... Uh, Pretty consistent. Had a little slow start on defense, uh, just calling defense correctly. But overall, uh, I thought once we got into the game, we played played good. Well, your quarterback, DJ Nunn's played well. Uh, how do you think he's progressing this season? Well, I think both of them, he and uh, little Cam, both have done well. Uh, played DJ more last week. Uh, we actually have been playing both of them, and DJ uh, Cam plays defense, so um, a little bit better. With DJ's got a little bit uh, advantage throwing because of his height, so, but both of them done a good job for us. You feel like you, are you comfortable with the two quarterback system going into the late part of the season? Well, you know it's uh, still uh, trying to wean ourselves from Bubba. You know we <laughs> we depended on him so much, but both of them done a good job for us. Uh, both good kids. Both of them work hard and. Uh, I think they've done a, a, a good job. Now you got a lot of guys in your squad that have impressed us watching you play this year, but one of them I want to mention that doesn't get a lot of play is your kicker, Valenzuela. Jesus. Jesus is very good. Uh, he, he's, uh, he does well kicking the ball. And I thought the other day it was funny. He said, Coach, I never understood football much. I come here from Mexico, but I understand a little better now. I know I keep looking. When that four comes up, I know it's time for me to go in. Well, it's a nice addition to your team. You played well. You come in five and one. Um, what do you think? Are the rivalry game still exciting for you? All games are exciting. Uh, this, uh, I think you know the fact that they're six and zero. Oh, they've uh, they've been very very strong on defense, uh, and um, they, they've got a good offense. It just I think their defense just been ahead of their offense because uh, they've got uh, the leading defense in the in this district right now and they run to the ball really well so it's, a, it's competitive and that's, that's what it's all about competition yeah it's, it's a good game to play 
I know you're ready for them. Coach Mike Smith, Hampton High School. Well, Mike Smith doesn't forget a thing. He was talking a little about a slow defensive start last week. His kick hand ran the ball on him pretty well. And the first couple of possessions last week ended up defeating them uh, handily. But kick hand put up a good fight in the first quarter, certainly uh, on the on their offensive side of the ball. Yeah, Karan Nixon had a, had a nice game against Hampton and, uh, you know, along with Melvin. So he's concerned about that. Uh, of course, Phoebus brings a running game, something they've been doing forever, it seems like. So, uh a little concern with the uh, the run defense uh, from Mike Smith. Well, we're going to see a lot of running from uh, from Jeremy Blunt's Phoebus Phantoms. We're going to see a lot of special stuff here on the afternoon. You can see there the giant football yeah. in your foreground in your picture. Uh, it's Rivalry Week, the Great American Rivalry Series. They're here again uh, for the this game, as they have been most years. Uh, should be a good one. You see the big football there that we – uh, strategically positioned between our camera and the clock there earlier, we were able to get it moved. Um, we did get a chance to catch up with Coach Jeremy Blunt at Phoebus, and he had a couple comments about the importance of this game. I'm with Coach Jeremy Blunt of Phoebus High School. Coach, you come in 6-0 and to this game. What do you think about playing the Crabbers with that kind of undefeated record? Uh, you know, it's like any other year, man. This is a really big rivalry. It's good for the city. You know, the kids really look forward to it. Um, I mean, it's been one of those games that's been highlighted uh, year after year since I was a kid and way before my time as well. So, you know, I think it's real good for the city and everyone enjoys it. So it should be a fun day. It's a beautiful day out here. So it should be a nice day for some football. Well, that leads into the question. Last weekend, one so beautiful with Hurricane Matthew coming close, giving us a lot of rain. You guys had to move your game. What do you think that extra week uh, does for your squad? Well, it gives you an opportunity to get some rest, you know, refocus on some little things, you know, clean up some some weaknesses that you may have, capitalize on some strengths. So, you know, we just took advantage of the opportunity. It was good that we didn't have to play on that Saturday because we really wouldn't have wanted to get out there in that type of weather. So, you know, we just took advantage of the free time and just looked to get better. All right, now your defense comes in highly touted, giving up only one score to any any particular opponent. Uh, can you do that with the Crabbers? Well, we just got to keep playing football. I mean, it's about assignments right now. You know, if we play assignment football, run to the ball, tackle, be opportunistic like we've been doing, we'll be okay. But we have to do those things. I'm going to ask you about one young man you, we mentioned when we talked a few weeks ago that has a lot of interceptions, Mr. Gregory. Oh, Gregory's playing good football back there. You know, he's one of our captains on the defense, and, you know, he's one of the guys that really puts us in place on the defense, and especially back there in the defensive backfield. You know, he can line the guys up, help, help, help make adjustments as he needs to. And, you know, so right now he's playing fundamental football, and that's what it's about, you know. Play fundamental football, do what your coach to do, and, you know, you'll be in place to make plays, and he's a pretty good athlete, so that helps out a lot as well. Well, you do play a lot of fundamental football. You run the ball a lot. Tell the fans a little bit about your running game. Well, we have three backs that spearhead that. So, you know, we have Daniel Wright, um, we have Bryce Bailey, and we have Daquan Fleming and, and, and Jalen Holloway. You know, we, we look at any one of those four guys, and at the end of the day, they can just flat out run the ball. So, you know, they, they really help our offensive line who really get after people up front. You know, they enjoy doing it. So, you know, when our backs are able to make plays like they do, it rewards our old line. So, you know, I guess it works hand in hand with one another. Well, it's been successful so far, 6-0. and Good luck today, Coach. Thanks. Coach Jeremy Blunt, Phoebus High School. Well, always good to hear what Coach Blunt has to say. He's done very well leading this program. Stepped in the middle of a season that I recall, and now in his fourth year over there, he was fifth year. Fifth year. And he's very impressive. He won the state championship as a player, came back as a coach. Uh, you know, like you said, he came in the middle of a season and basically turned the culture around, and, and, uh, and they're doing well, 6-0. and Well, they do come in strong. And it, I, I, I want to mention uh, somebody, you know, you and I pick up a few favorites, usually the guys that don't get a lot of play, but Jalen Holloway, the fullback, oh, yeah. Is, the, is really, I think, the key to this running game. Absolutely. They, Phoebus, we talked off air how, how they love their fullbacks. You know, Peyton Ryder last year, Holloway was in and out of, as a fullback. He just paves the way for all the all the, the three running backs that, that Jeremy Blunt talked about, Bailey, Fleming, and Wright. So Holloway, he also plays defensive line. So he has that mentality that he, he plays he plays defense on offense. And Anybody in front of him is going to knock him over. So. Oh, it's so important to their running game for Holloway. And I, I would encourage you as you watch this game, folks, to keep an eye on the big number 40. Yes. Uh, you'll see the true Phoebus. Feeb- running game when you watch that and you uh, asked about Gregory as well Frank uh, like, like we there talked about is. earlier nine, nine interceptions in, in, uh, in six games he's the, he's a leader in the backfield and uh, this should be a great one just trying to contain you know the dangerous Daz Newsom on Hampton's offense well that's that's going to be a good matchup Gregory 6'3 195 pound safety and he plays all yeah. over the field you'll see number 21 there and you pictured you'll see him 
on the field this afternoon. It is a beautiful afternoon here at Darlin Stadium. Awesome day. Great football weather. We got both bands here today. The Hampton Band coming in. The Phoebus Band is uh, played the national anthem they're going to make their way into the bleachers it's great to see all the kids out here uh and on this rivalry week game you know i joke with mike smith i said since i've been here you've been a you've had a rivalry with bethel kickatan and ham and our phoebus so uh, it seems like hampton has rivalries all over the city but you know it's, it's a good rivalry you know since 2000 i guess in in in, in one when, when phoebus started winning the championships i think the rivalry switched over to the phoebus and we've seen great games since and you know kate from the daily press documented it to the other day on the great games that we've had and hopefully we'll have a great game today well i, I gotta give i gotta commend kate one i gotta lament the fact that her nationals went down this week in the playoffs <laughs> I know it took. She probably took a couple of days off, but yeah, one absolutely. of the finest young writers oh, yeah, in the sure. area. She has been here now just over a year. And Kate Yanchulis with the Daily Press, I highly recommend you pick up a paper to catch her articles. She did a great job today talking about some of those the five best games in the last what ten years. Well, I think she had. It. Well, she makes me seem smart because I just look at her stuff and bring it on the air. So, <laughs> that's right. but um, that's my little secret. But anyway, <laughs> she's great. I mean, she she's only been here what no more just than a little year. less than, yeah. yeah, a little more than a year. So. Uh, but she's come right in. You know, she, she has, uh, you know, respect from the coaches here, and she's doing a great job. Very, yes. very great. Very well, nice we job. appreciate all she does. The Daily Press, of course, helps us with the statistics oh, yeah. every year, so I do commend them. All right, the Crabbers in the field as the captains get ready. You'll see the Hampton captains on the far side. And no, folks, they, uh, that, that, there's nothing wrong with your picture. Those three guys standing are, next to Daz Newsom are that big. They are high school kids, too, by the way. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's Dez Newsom, number five for the Crabbers. When you see his him on the far side, here come the Phantoms and their traditional entry. This They're the home team today wearing the dark jerseys with the blue numerals that we hope we can see better in the daytime. Hampton yeah. in the white with the red numerals this afternoon. Here come the Phantoms. No music this afternoon for the Phantoms. We'll see how that – they usually have – a big speaker playing, and we'll see if that affects their preparation. Yeah, but we do have the golf cart, which makes up for the band that Hampton brings. Hampton so. golf cart over there. You'll hear him in the background. Of course, our great PA guy here, Jim, the, you'll hear his voice. In fact, if you if you anywhere in Hampton last night, it was a beautiful night here in oh, Hampton, yeah. and you could hear his voice booming all yeah. over my neighborhood. You keep track of the game down here. Bethel got a win last night. Kickatan got a win here mm -hmm. on Thursday night. So uh, only one Hampton team is going to lose uh, this weekend, yeah. and it's going to be one of the two teams we have today, the 6-0 and Phantoms and the 5-1 and Crabbers. You know, I like this afternoon football, Wube. We, we're very fortunate that we able to get the whole crew here today. Yes. Uh, but I think the uh, the HD oh, uh, camera nice. yes. and the video we show on YouTube, folks, Hampton City Schools channel has it on uh, YouTube. Check it out. That will be up Monday. The game will be rebroadcast on LSC 48 yeah. throughout the week. We'll start on Sunday and then play it throughout the week. So if you missed something, you want to go back and watch it. If you like the replay ability, go to YouTube because yeah. you can just set the little bar back and watch it. But that YouTube is on in HD. Yeah, I, I watch it all the time. So yeah. um, the picture is awesome. It makes me look a little, I don't know, different for lack of a better word. But uh, it's great. I mean, I love, I watch it. I go back and watch the games and um, looking at the views, of, a lot of other people are doing the same thing. So Yeah, we got a good crowd coming. In this afternoon, I hope we have more. It's such a beautiful day. I know oh, the yeah. folks all hemmed in last weekend by the rain we had here. I got to commend Beth Mayer and her oh, yeah. crew. Darling Stadium looks beautiful, and we had had almost 11 inches of rain in less than 24 hours last weekend. Yeah, the whole season they've done a great job with it with the stadium and the field. Well, it's the third game of the week here, Darling. So this is uh, impressive. Here come the captains. Is the Elijah Conliffe there, number 55 for the Crabbers. Number 70, Justin Red. Number 32. Uh, number 5, Daz Newsom. And number 65 is Jalen Powell. For the Phantoms there, number 5 is Shadarius Horn. Number 15 is Isaiah McNair. Number 32 is Marcus Tate, who received an academic award. We were just watching him being presented with that. And number 40, of course, uh, the senior fullback, Jalen Holloway. So the captain's meeting in the field with the Marine Corps representatives. And we're going to have a coin flip there and see who gets the ball first this afternoon. I'd love to hear those academic accolades. That was impressive yes. resume for Mr. Tate, number 32. 4.11 average. And people forget they do go to class, too. Uh, and, and that's their main job, and I'm sure both coaches and uh, parents will tell them. So the traditional coin... No one sportsman like no Connie. All right, play hard football. Okay, 
Okay, we had a pregame. Yeah, we can't hear what he had to say, but we are uh, looking at just hard to get that mic from me in there. Oh, and it turned out to be what you said. Okay? Sure you know what the was toss. He was, has won the toss. They've de de deferred to the second half. Hampton will get the ball here first in the first half. Grabber's going to defend the goal to the west. Phoebus will defend the goal to the east here at Darlin Stadium. Crowd's still coming in. It was nice to see a line yeah. at the gates this afternoon. We talk a little bit about the attendance here, and we want to yeah. see more of you folks out here, especially late in the season and in the playoffs, because yeah. we're going to have at least three teams in the playoffs. We're tailgating over here in the field, so people are still coming in. Good to see. It really is good to see. A good crowd here this afternoon. The officials out there, a senior crew to call this game, a very uh, veteran crew. Probably, they'll, they'll, take, they'll take less offense with that term, <laughs> but it's a good crew. The umpire, excuse me, the, the referee, Bill Dozier, the umpire, Calvin Hill, the headline's been Reginald Stanley. Line judge, Andrew Samaglio. The side judge, Neil Robinson. The field judge, Brian Davis. The back judge, Tony Brown. And of course, our timekeeper right up here with us, Herman Drone. The Drone Man. Good to have Herman up here That's with us. Right. It's uh, he's a steady, and of course Jim uh, over here doing the PA. You'll hear his voice in the background. He does a great job. Oh, for um, sure. And yeah. lets the fans know what's going on in the game. Big umbrellas up here to keep the sun off on a sunny Saturday afternoon. The kicking game could come into play here. The, the Phoebus fan, I'm still working a little bit on their kickers and. They have several talented young men they've been working in. And Crabber's gone with Jesus Valenzuela, if you heard from Coach Smith. Looks like Phoebus has up to three kickers I've seen this year. Looks like Gregory's going to do this. Well, he can do most anything else. No, it's that's not. Actually, that's actually Rogers. The quarterback's going to do the kicking. Little swift mm -hmm. kick goes to number two. That's up to about 44 good field position yeah. starting for the crab that looked like Travion Davis Travion Davis yeah, I'm sorry yeah Travion Davis it's like the ball came loose but it's like Hampton stayed on to it as they started around the 45 yard line on this Saturday afternoon at Darling Stadium six games the Phantoms have played they've given up the high number of points in the first game of the season eight eight points is all they've given up in, in, in uh, it's a high given up seven to a couple other teams but they've only given up one score in each of their six contests impressive. this year. Very impressive. The DJ Nunn brings out the Crabbers wearing number 12. He's got Smith and Newsom behind him. We've seen a lot of Newsom in the backfield in the last couple of weeks. Nunn under center. Goes to Newsom. First play of the game. He goes far, far side. He cuts. He cuts in. Oh, first play of the game. He could go all the way. He gets, he gets to the outside. Number 11, Charity knocks him out of bounds. What a play by Daz Newsom. The first play from scrimmage. Well, the move, maneuver around the linebacker, Peyton Ryder, was a smooth move right there. As he's able to skip down the sideline. Big run for Daz Newsom. There's no, once you watch Daz Newsom play, there'll be no question in your mind why he was snatched up by the Maryland Terrapins. And you can see, like we talk, talked about right earlier, there. right there, the cut up, yeah. Playing more back, playing more of a running back in the uh, last few weeks. Damian Charity, the junior safety, has to make the stop. First saving, and ten. saving a touchdown. It was first and ten at the 25 for Hampton. None under center. Again, Smith and Newsom. Newsom gets the ball this time up the middle. He's tackled right away by Phoebus. Looked like number five, Shadarius Horn, had right at his feet. He had certainly held his block there. Horn, one of those, one of those great linebackers yeah. that Phoebus is always. Known for 5'10", 220. Solid man. Cinder block with cleats. <laughs> Very solid. Nick Newsom with a three yard gain. it would be second and seven from the 21. We'll see if none goes the air against this uh, Phantom defense. No pass attempts last week against Kickatan. Back to Newsom. This is the Newsom show. Actually, no. none keeps it. I'm sorry, none kept the ball. Fooled the Phoebus defense along with me, so. Well, they fooled him all the way up to over. It looks like he picked up the first down, depending on the spot. And that was a good uh, fake. Spot and has got it as a first down inside the 15. Good fake by Hampton as Nunn keeps it. Well, I think the fact that Nunn looked like he didn't know where he was going kind of fooled everybody, but it was a great play might, by the quarterback. Might have been a busted play, but they'll take it. First and 10 from the 19-yard line. 
I'm sorry, 13 yard line. This time it goes to Smith up the middle. They are running up the middle on on Phoebus and, and doing pretty well. Well, that's Traquan, Traquan Smith. You'll see him as a starter in the lineup here. DJ Nunn at quarterback, Smith at fullback, Daz Newsom in the running back spot. Then Grogan's pulley, Bellamy, Volf, Powell, Conliffe, Henderson, and Red. That front line is tremendous in size and in talent. They're getting better every week. And as you can see, the first few plays. That's Justin Red blocking yeah. the sun there on the end, the right tackle. So second and four from the 14. Newsom, far side. He tries to cut back in. He does not get out of get inside. It's Looks like it was a tackle made by number 88. That's Bat Patterson Battle and Purdy were on the tackle. Well, really mainly by sleeve only. There's the defense right here. Corante Jackson, Dar uh, Darrell Bryant, Deontay Walters, Marcus Tate, and Ryder at linebacker along with Darius Horn. The corners, Andre Jackson, Caleb Randolph. One of the defensive in there, Keyshawn Battle Patterson. We call his number a lot. And, of course, the safeties, Damian Cherry and Jonathan Gregory. The Randolph is in for Pope today. None goes back to Newsom, and this time he stopped. Actually, bounces off a tackle, then cuts in. Good move by Newsom to pick up a couple yards. It was a third and one. I'm not sure if he was able to get it. Looks like it's going to be fourth down, Frank. Yeah, I don't think he got it. He's about a half yard short at least. Well, he made it interesting by, by getting out of that first tackle. Now, this is where a guy like Valenzuela comes in, and I'm, I'm not sure he's going to kick yet, and he's not going to kick. No, looks like Hampton's going to go for it, fourth and one. At Mike, the five. Yeah, if you figure the line that size. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Red, 6'5", 275. Elijah Conliffe, 6'5", 300. Phoebus just brought in Deontay Walters, just a 6'3", 15 nose guard to combat Hampton's line. None goes to Newsom. He has it. He hurdles over a player. Looks like he's going to be yeah, inside, the two, inside the two. He's going to get the first down. Well, the center, I believe, it may have been Volk. The center submarine that nose guard and uh, running back able to leap over the, the pile and pick up the first down. Here's a good play here. You'll see number 60 and oh, look at the hurdle. also 65, uh, Jalen Powell. Powell, the center. The track coach might see that and tell him to come up with the, uh, the track team after that hurdle he did on, the, on Phoebus. This time, Nunn's, on, Nunn's back under center. Looks like it was a busted play again. This time, none's going to be sacked. Not sure what happened on that play, but nonetheless, yeah. Phoebus is all over it. Marcus Tate was among the phantoms that were in there pushing back. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Two plays where none looks like he was a little confused. The first one, he got the first down. This time, he it's like a late snap. And Phoebus was on it. And Phoebus will be on you every time you fall out of rhythm on offense. See the Phoebus cheerleader. Young ladies working hard all season long. Got a pleasant day today to be out. Be second and goal from the two. Well, this time, Nunn's in shotgun. Newsom's behind him. Smith to his left. Goes to Nunn. He goes, he's going to take it himself, and he is going to get in to the end zone. Touchdown, Hampton. Well, that was a real test of the, the line play by the two teams, and none with a lot of patience that time, waiting for the hole to open up. And so they went on Conliffe's side, the left side of the line, behind Conliffe, and of course, number 65 for the Crabbers, uh, Jalen Powell. Very surprised there were no passes on that drive. It's last week, no passes attempts. And this time, they just drive the ball down the field with all runs. Here's Jesus Valenzuela. Waiting for the 11th man for the Crabbers to come out and block so he can kick the extra point. The hold out of Daz Newsom's hand. A good backup in case there's a, a bad snap. Why not put your best? I never understood why player teams don't put their best athlete as, as the holder, just in case, like you said. Oh, this time it's a, it's a high snap, but it looks like he still got it off. No. And it's no left. good. The it, snap was, looks like it was to Newsom's right. Yep, Newsom had to reach behind himself, grab it, and then put it down and... A little too late, ball sails left. And so a game, in a game like this, those things can, can come back to haunt you later on. And I really thought I really thought the Crabbers had the advantage on the kicking game. Here's none. Look at him just watch yeah. there. Conliffe up front there with the, the rest of the Hampton line clearing the way. Very impressive start for the Crabbers. I, I didn't expect the, the ease with which they went yeah, down the field I'm, that time. I'm, yeah, I'm very surprised by how easy they went down the field. I mean, 
you knew Newsom was going to get the ball, but to get the ball what five times on that drive. Well, they uh, certainly you certainly know that uh, he's going to he's going to he, he, he might as well have a target on that uniform <laughs> rather than number five. So none with the running touchdown. And the Crabbers lead it six nothing here with 7:47 to go in this first quarter. Good crowd still coming into this two oh, yeah. o'clock ball game. Great day for football. It really is. Balance well the kick for the Crabbers. Good kick by Venice. Well, looks like. Uh, Hard to see. It looks like it's Bryce Bailey on the on the return. Bryce Bailey, one of the three running backs. He's a junior. About a 15-yard return there for Bailey. So that's a good good field position for the Phantoms. They get going here on their own 34-yard line. Let's we'll see what what Phoebus does. They, you know they're known for the running game. So let's see if they, they do the same thing that Hampton just did on their drive. Well, and, and we saw Mike Smith throw a, a few different things in yeah. there. I'll just uh, either, you know, kind of surprised by going right at him, right yeah, up the very, middle. You picked up on that. Very surprised by that drive. I would be surprised if they do anything but follow that big Jalen Holloway. Number 20 in the backfield for the Phantoms is Bryce Bailey. Diamond Rogers, the starting quarterback for Kick or, oh, I'm sorry, for Kick it for Phoebus. He's under center. Oh, he fumbles it, picks it back up. He's going to try to get a couple yards out of it. It was like a botched snap, but he's going to get at least a yard, I think, on that one. He's in the middle of that group there. Zamir Rogers, 6'3", 180-pound quarterback. He's a junior. You'll see him atop. Well, he's starting at quarterback. McNair, we understand, will play a little wide out today. Daniel Wright, Andre Jackson, Edwards, Jackson, and Holloway. And then Battle Patterson, Walters, Cooper, Gregory, Wilson, Saylor, and Sharp to be the kicker. And someone who wasn't listed as a starter but will be getting a lot of playing time is a young sophomore, Barry Hargrave, who the coaches are really high on. He wears look, number four. Yeah, look out for him. Rogers under center. Now Bryce Bailey goes in motion. Going to go to Holloway, the fullback, and he goes nowhere. A flag, goes on the, flag is thrown on the play as well. Yeah, a little confusion on, on no, Phoebus. It, it's going to be on Bailey for moving forward while the ball was being snapped. He was in motion, but he was headed toward the line, so that ball's going to come back five year, three yards. So not a good start for, for Phoebus. Ball start. Tackle by, by the Elijah Conliffe. Five-yard penalty remains a second senior. down. Being recruited by all the – Everybody. Everybody that can yeah, possibly yeah, yeah. come here. Here's the defense. Pyle Conliffe, Volk Laporte gets the start on the defensive line along with Coleman. Then Davis, Gaskins, Bellamy, Stevenson, Newsom, and Nunn. Cam Stevenson sharing this time at quarterback, but a terrific defensive player. So second and 13 from the 31 for Phoebus. Not a good start for the Phantoms as Rodgers looks to the sideline for the play. Rogers listed at 6'3". He's, he's uh, got to be 6'5". Right? Get that tape measure back yeah, out. A yeah. lot of confusion. Shotgun. Now, looks like Phoebus is going to have to call a timeout. Jeremy Blunt not happy with what's going on in the offense right now. Not a good start for Phoebus. I haven't noticed anything that the Crabbers are doing as far as lining up on defense. It's throwing them out. You, you, you have a junior quarterback making what his third start, I think, on yeah. the year. Um, McNair injured early in the season, back in action, we understand, and hopefully we get to play a little bit today. But Rodgers has played well yeah. the last time we saw him. Very well, yeah. You know, I don't know if it's, you know, the, it, because it's against Hampton or what, but they just haven't seemed to be on the same page on defense as well. I mean, Hampton ran the ball uncharacteristic or Phoebus to have a team just run down the run down the field. So they're going to make hopefully make some adjustments and, uh, and turn this around. And it's still early. Keep in mind they had the week off. Right. Too. Yep. I didn't think about that. You're and right. So yeah. and, and we, you know, what surprised me is they didn't seem to be upset by that at all because they they moved the game from last week up to their bye week right before the playoffs. Again, both these teams in line to make the playoffs in the different conferences, divisions, groups. <laughs> it's hard to even explain it, folks. Well, Phoebus is one in 3A, and Hampton is number two in 5A currently. Rodgers and shotgun, second and 13 from the 31. This time Bailey goes in motion to the near side. Rodgers goes back to pass. He's pressured, and this time he's going to get he – he gets out of a sack, but then he is sacked by Cunliffe, the guy we talked about earlier. 
Mr. Everything for Hampton on defense and offensive, the offensive line. A lot of pressure placed on him that time for, by the Crabbers. Number eight, Johnny Gaskins also in. You'll see, is that eight or nine? Cameron Laporte. That's Laporte that was in as well on that on the pressure there on Rodgers. See, Rodgers got away from the first initial pressure. It's Cunliffe missed, actually came around the spin move and uh, got him and took him down. You see Coleman, Red, Powell, and Cunliffe, the front four for the Crabbers on this play. So that's a loss of two, so it's third and 15 from the 29. Rodgers this time under center. Draw play to to uh, Balls on the ground. It's a fumble. Yep. And Hampton, it's on, it looks like the referee says he was down. I don't know. It must have been down after the ball came out because he, he was chasing the ball. The, the handoff was not a clean one and running back chasing the ball that time. Surprisingly, we haven't seen Daniel Wright. That was Bryce Bailey on the carry. So no Daniel Wright. Not yet. We've been, we haven't, you know, we've seen surprises before. In fact, did Wright even play in the last series of the game we saw? Yeah, he didn't start. He didn't play that first, first series. series. And we were a little uh, surprised by that. But it, that's a little, a little tweak that uh, uh, Coach Blunt can put in to throw off the defense. So Phoebus is in the punt. Bailey is, is the punt is blocked. It's going to get inside the 10, and it's going to be a touchdown for Hampton off of the block punt. That's Travion Davis, who's done everything on special teams so far that time with the block, and then hustles in and picks up the ball and able to roll into the end zone. So not a good start at all for Phoebus. Hampton gets the big play on special teams. Well, the, the snap a little slow, and the, the play slow developing, which is a bad way to go. You see the, the golf cart there for the Crabbers with the horn. And Gregory, who's a normal punter, is not punting. That was Bryce Bailey on the punt. Like you said, a high snap. He tried to regroup. Here it is you here. See, look, he took an extra step. And, and that's right. Davis, Davis has right on block. top of it. And he chases it down. That's, that's number eight. That's Johnny Gass. He, he picks picked up it up. Scores. Yeah, what a play. Great play on special teams. That's the key. So the junior, Johnny Gaskins, gets the touchdown. So like Hampton's going to go for two. See if they can get back to the even 14. Oh, another flag. If well, Phoebus jumped, they're going to be a, a yard penalty or half a yard penalty. Snap. Encroachment by the defense. Penalties half the distance. Play so the some sloppy play early by the Phantoms. Yeah. Again, it could be this week of rust. And they were not able to compete last week. It was an option to play Thursday earlier in the week, Frank, but they declined because there wasn't enough preparation. They're scheduled to play Heritage, and they just decided to move the game to the bye week, and both teams. Uh, nine of the ten, and I call it the Peninsula District still, teams had uh, had a bye week before the playoffs started. All right, none goes to Newsom. He gets in, in. in for the two-point conversion. 14-0 Hampton. Very simple going right behind Elijah Conliffe there, the left tackle. Very surprised, Frank, at this early early score. Well, the line for Hampton, offensive line, has controlled the game so far. And like we said, the week off, you want to know if that's if that's. Here's the play here. Watch the left side, Conliffe, yeah. and then the, the also number 75 for the Crabbers, Ezekiel Volk, with a great block, opening the gate for Dad Newsom. That's just mano y mano up the middle, pushing yeah, back. We've mentioned Newsom a lot, and you're going to hear his name a lot. He does a lot of things here, as as did his brother Dion before him, and his father Myron Newsom right. before them, uh, but. Daz is a special player, a very quick player. He takes a beating and keeps on going. Yeah, he does. So it very rarely does he get hit square on, though, because of his moves. And so that time, just finding a little bit of a gap in the line and able to dive across the end zone, into the end zone. We saw in the first play from a scrimmage as he went far side up the sideline, just showed his speed as he got out to the outside on a sweet play. There's Bailey Jackson in horn back for the Phantoms. Is that Hargrave? Hargrave. Is he going to kick off? Oh, all yeah, three are capable of it. taking it all the way back. This time it's going to be uh, Bailey who's, who's going to get the get it at the 15. He has some room. He has some blockers. He cuts it up, but he's taken down by Hampton at around the 32-yard line. So good, good return by Bailey. Good tackle that time. I believe that was number 80. Looks like 86, 88. Ron L. Simmons. Or oh, Marcus Taft may have had him that time, 85. So first down, 
Phantoms. For the Phantoms, and it's going to be nope, right there on the 32. So just two yards shy of where they started the last time. Now Still right for the first down. Yeah, here comes Daniel Wright, number 33 for the Phantoms. And no Holloway, or is that Holloway, Holloway up right yeah, by yeah. There, yeah. So Rodgers, Holloway goes to the far side of him. Rodgers, under center. Goes to Daniel Wright, he gets a hole. Oh, he's stopped by Cunliffe. Bounces off of it. Maybe picks up maybe two yards out of it. A real good run by Wright, considering he met a wall there at the line of scrimmage. He's able to fall forward and pick up almost three yards. Yeah. Still a so second down about seven with Daniel Wright in the backfield. Holloway more of a H back. He's, he's moving all over the line. This time he goes as a, in his normal fullback position. Rogers under center. Second and seven goes back to back to right. He bounces off another tackle, but Cunliffe is there again. Cunliffe is having a great game to start off. Well, that time Powell was the guy he bounced off of. He couldn't wrap him up, but he certainly couldn't get through him and fed him right into the hands of uh, Elijah Cunliffe. So this is the best best game I've seen Cunliffe play so far in the last couple of years. As he's uh, having a great game bouncing off the of tackles and making some great plays. Third and seven from the 35, Phoebus. Phoebus hasn't had an opportunity to get going on offense. Yeah, Jamari Saunders in at left tackle. There's a sophomore, 6'3", 255. I see him up in the line up there. Third and seven from the 35, Rogers in the center. Single setback is right. Second timeout by Phoebus is blunt. Saw something he didn't like and decided to call a timeout. 14 nothing Hampton, 3-12 left in the first quarter. Not what we expected no. early, but it's still, again, it's still early. And, uh, well, you, know, you just never let's know. Let's think about this, Wube. Um, Phoebus now has given up two scores in the game for the first time in the 2016 season. That's correct. That is right, yes. Well, that surprises uh, certainly all the, all the folks that have watched the Phoebus defense play this year. It's a special teams pick up by Gaskins. So the team's talking with the coaches. This is always a great game. Phoebus, of course, uh, opened, I believe it's 76 they opened uh, Phoebus High School. And Hampton Crabbers have been around a long, long time. They dominated this series for a long time. Then the Phantoms starting back in the early 2000, right, 2000, 2001 with Coach D. Coach D, yeah. Leading the Phantoms to a streak of wins there. The Crabbers and Phantoms have produced great ball games. So in the first championship in 01, Jeremy Blunt was part of that team. The Crabbers adjusting the defense. Third and seven to the 35. Holloway and right behind Rodgers. He's under center. Goes this time he fakes the right. Little play action. He has he's got pressure and he's sacked by Gaskins. Well, Johnny Gaskins having a whale of a game today. Yes, he is. That time Rodgers rolls out, but really didn't look like he had an idea of what to do once he got out. They didn't have they only had one wide out that time. That's whether we hear the coaches behind us yelling about the tight end. You'll see Rodgers fakes, and then he rolls, and then Gaskins all over him. Gaskins saw it all the way. Johnny Gaskins, 6'2", 170-pound junior. So this is where uh, Phoebus around the same spot they were last time. So Holloway in the block. So it's Tyler Nelson is going to be doing the punting. Another rough snap is Newsom has to go back, and he is he bobbles it, but picks it back up. This is where he's dangerous. This yeah. is where he's dangerous, folks. He has room on the on the far side. He got a couple good blocks. He's moving yeah. around. He's going to take it all the way, Frank. This is where this is where Newsom is dangerous. Touchdown, Hampton. Not a what flag a play. on the ground either. That is very impressive <laughs> run back. Wow. That is why the University of Maryland said we want you to come here. I think saw three terrapins in the stands yeah. jump with joy on that. Good series of open field blocks and just Newsom. There is a flag. There is a flag on the 35. Where are we looking? What a play. Wow. Flag may be. Let's see. They oh, got one. Mike Smith is on the field. He's not, a, not happy about it, but we'll see what they what they call. I looked. I didn't see it initially. Daz Newsom. Flag or no flag. What a play by Daz Newsom. Well, we haven't seen it. 
Haven't seen it uh, signaled yet. Mike Smith has taken the cap off of his head and he is giving it all to the referee. Well, we have the luxury of replay, so we might be able to see something, but let's see what the call that is. That may have been some sort of sportsmanlike conduct. Let's see. An extra point. Yes, unsportsmanlike conduct must be. Or Sideline side interference against Hampton on the play. That penalty will be administered either on the try or the kickoff. The touchdown is good. Oh, so if the touchdown is good, touchdown Hampton. So sideline interference oh. that must have occurred after the touchdown. The flag, yeah, I'm not, I don't know why that. It had to have occurred after the touchdown. If, it, if the sideline truly was interfering with the defense, it would have been during the play, yeah. it would have been brought back. So I don't know how that would be after the touchdown. I don't think Jeremy Blunt has a few questions. Sideline interference against Hampton. Beavis is elected to take the penalty on the kickoff. We'll have the try for point at the three yard line. All right, so that a good explanation. So the penalty will be tacked on against the Crabbers on the kickoff. I am shocked, but well, it's 20 to nothing so far, yeah. Herman, our clock keeper, is very, he must be a Maryland fan down there. He's very pleased. Two flags. Flag play. I don't know if that's on the fan. Illegal maybe. substitution oh. by the defense. Oh. 12 men on the field. Just not a good, well, not a good start for Phoebus at no. all. Trying to get an extra player out there on the try. Let's see. They're going to decline it. Valenzuela says, uh, why not? I'll just kick it from here. Let's see if we can get a good snap as the extra man comes off for Phoebus. That this one's one good. good by, by Venezuela. Venezuela puts up this little bow on that one. 21 0 Hampton Crabbers, 2 0 2 to go in the first quarter. Well, you, you know, listen. here's a play right here. And you know, usually when, when you bobble it, it gives them an opportunity to regain themselves, and this is where he's at his best. I mean, close, don't, at that was a close penalty or, or lack, not one called behind him. The rest of them are good block. A good one on Holloway just to slow him down. And there's nobody on that field going to catch him. That's an awesome play. And we have, we've been talking weeks about Brent Bronco Mendenhall and Justin Fiente. We can't, I mean, he's already committed yeah. to Maryland now, but. So UVA and they missed Virginia out on a Tech great one. missed out on a, on a great one. But, uh, we have the luxury to see him here in high school before he goes off. So we're. Well, fans, get out of here to Darlington yes. Stadium where you pay $5 to see him play <laughs> instead of $55 on a college Saturday. You know, we, we've also have mentioned in our broadcast of Hampton that it is more dangerous to kick it to Newsom behind him yeah. Yeah. or to kick it deep to Newsom where he can get a running start. Yes. Well, all the great special teams guys, Curry, when Iverson was there, yeah. Newsom, I mean, it can go on and on. When, when the ball is kicked behind him, a lot of times they'll bobble it. it. The defense reacts to the bobble. They know where they're going and they make the great play. Well, here's Valenzuela kicking from his own 25, and, but he's got a good leg. Let's see how far he can boot it down there. It's going to be a fair catch for, for Phoebus. That's, uh, that's Tate. So the, the captain of the Phantoms makes a fair catch call there, and the Phantoms get a little better field position, starting on their own 37 this time. So they've started the 34, the 32, and the 37. This is their best field position so far. No first, first downs yet for the Phantoms. Haven't had much success on offense. The defense actually, actually, be honest, Frank, the defense hasn't played bad. They had that one drive, but two of the two of Hampton's uh, touchdowns were on special teams. So. Well, the Hamptons had the ball, what, just once? Yeah, off, just eh? once, and they scored, <laughs> but, you know. So the Phantoms have dug themselves a hole here in the first quarter. Zymir Rogers, the junior quarterback out. Daniel Wright behind him. Official's Official time. time so Rogers in shotgun with Wright. Edwards and Jackson near side. Hargrave far side. Shotgun for Phoebus. Rogers pass is complete to Jackson. Good play for about nine, eight or nine yards in that pass. Good. First completion of the game for Rogers. Good tackle by Daz Newsom on the fans. Andre Jackson, a guy you really got to watch out for if you're the Crabber defensive backs. And again, Frank, it's only the first quarter, so this game is far from over. 
21-0 Hampton early on. 144 left in the first quarter. Hampton with two special team touchdowns, a block punt and a punt return by the dangerous Daz Newsom. Second and one. Rodgers goes back in shotgun with Wright. Rodgers to Wright. And he has enough. Oh, well, I thought he had enough for the first down. It looks like they're going to give him forward progress, though. He's going to get the first down. His Cunliffe looks like his leg was wrapped around. Yeah, a little late. A little, he's okay. Yeah, he's all right. But I got to come in number 65 for the Phantoms that time. Uh, the, the lineman who had a really good block on Conliffe kept him out of play to the very end there. It was enough to give uh, right enough space Don to get a first down. Donovan Cooper had a real good block there. Six foot and 250 sophomore. And it's a little fella. Yeah. So first down and 10 feet was their first first down of the game. It comes one minute and 10 seconds in the first quarter. Rodgers in the shotgun. This time he's going back, he goes back to pass, and it's incomplete intended for Hargrave. That was a dangerous play as Cam Stevenson was right there. Cam Stevenson's eyes got really big mm. as he thought he could pick that off, and if he had, it had been a touchdown because there was nobody behind nobody the receiver. Mm. Is that Jackson over there on the far side? No, that was Hargrave. Hargrave. To Jackson near side with Edwards. Barry Hargrave, a sophomore, six foot, 175 pounder who they have a lot of confidence oh, in. Oh, they love that kid. What did uh, Coach Blunt tell us? Young, but really, really good. Really what good. <laughs> Rogers looks at his wristband, calls out the play. Second and 10 from the 48 yard line. Rogers in shotgun, has right. Goes back to pass. This time it's a draw play to right. He gets a little room, bounces off a couple tackles, but that Hampton line is there after a, game of, a gain of maybe four. Tyreek Coleman tried to wrap him up there at the line of scrimmage. He's able to squirm a few more yards down the field. So the third down with the Phantoms. They're going to try to set real quick here. Speed this up a little bit. You can see Hampton's line really doing damage. At this size as we talked about all season. Michael Cole moves to this the near side there as the Phoebus has three receivers. One in the far right who's stepping over the line of scrimmage. The official tells him to step back. Rogers, shotgun, goes back to pass. He's going to, looks like it's number 15, McNair, the former quarterback. He doesn't have enough room. He fumbles ball. the ball. Looks like Phoebus picks it up. And they're going to gain maybe two yards off of the fumble. Isaiah McNair was hit. And it looks like he's a little little hurt there. Jamari Sanders able to fall on for the Phantoms after uh, Conliffe swatted it away. Conliffe then fell on Sanders. Tough decision here for, for uh, Phoebus. That's a quarter, gentlemen. That's a quarter. So the Phantoms now go to the at the end of the first quarter. They trailed at 21-0. I couldn't tell you the last time they trailed a game 21-0. And I'm talking about in the last 15, 20 years. It's been a while. As you see uh, throw over Rogers here. over to McNair, the former quarterback. And it looks like it was, was that yeah. Jet on the hit? To, to uh, jar the ball open, I mean, bar, jar the ball away. Yep, and only through the good fortune of Jamari Sanders landing on did the Phantoms keep possession. Conlon's big Paul was out there to try to swoop, uh, sweep it under himself. So a tough quarter for the Phantoms, Wu Bay. Not used to seeing this. No. Not used no. to seeing this. But again, it's. You know, it's Hampton. Hampton is just. I don't have the know. Elias Sports Agency information <laughs> available to me, but I can't remember when the Phantoms last gave up 21 points and a half. Well, I remember the playoff game against Magna Vista. They were down. I'm not sure exactly how much, yeah. but they, they they came back in that game. So again, this is it's oh, early. Yeah. I mean, this, First this quarter. is early. So it looks like uh, Phoebus is going to go for it. It's going to be fourth and eight for midfield. As soon as the players figure out which way they're going here for the second quarter, everybody. Going to change places. Good, good look here at Andre Jackson to the near side. Looks like Gregory is. And Jonathan Gregory, who we've talked, he caught nine balls as an interception, yeah. so I'm sure he can catch him <laughs> offensively. <laughs> Gregory's a big receiver. Yes. Trevor Cameron Stevenson's going to be guarding him. It's like right goes in motion. Rodgers in shotgun. Only one man Rogers out here. Goes back to pass. He's got defense. Jackson. It's going to be caught. He caught it. Call it a catch. Good catch by Jackson. Good throw short by Rodgers. Short the first down, but good catch. Looks like it's going to be a little short, but they're going to have to measure. That's going to be a good spot, so I don't know. This is going to be a tough one. 
I think he's shy by just a, a bit. It will depend on the spot. You see here, there's only two defensive backs out there. Good throw. Oh, couldn't see it there with the glare on our screen, but it was a good catch because it did count. They're going to come over and measure this. Game of inches, Frank. It really is. So here come the sticks. And we, we won't be able to see it there right at the feet. Steve Fryer working a the camera there. He may be able to get a spot for us. Steve working his way in from the Vibus, or excuse me, the Crabber's side of the field. There we go. See if he can get it. Yeah, he's got a good shot of the official getting ready for the mark. Big, big call right here. It looks like it's going to be. First down, Phoebus. First down. Well, good spot. Good play by Jackson. That saves the Phantoms. They get the second first down of the game. Hard fought first down. So it, was though, a tough, it was a tough one, but they got it. So first and 10 for the Phantoms on the Crabber 42. Good drive so far for Phoebus. That was a huge fourth down play. That time the Crabber's a little bit off, uh, out of whack on defense. They only had two defenders out and against three receivers, allowing Jackson to step up in there and catch that pass. Jackson is the, the Daz Newsom of, of, of Phoebus. He, he's the one that he's the playmaker for Phoebus on offense. Number two, Andre Jackson, the senior. Explosive yes. is how Coach Blunt described it. Remember when I lost my mind on that one play he had against kick ten. He was zigzagging and weaving through. Let's see if he can do that today against Hampton. Shotgun for Rodgers, right behind to the, to the uh, far side. Right, shotgun, gives it to, sorry, gives Rodgers gives it to right near side. Good run by Wright. As he's pushing, he's still running, pushing a few crabbers with him. Daniel Wright, the yeah. junior running back, there's a flag. Yeah. So there's going to be maybe some taunting going on. Yeah, number 78, Tim Young. I believe. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct taunting against Fever. Yep, and that's going to be on 78, I believe. I was watching him. He was locked up over here. No, maybe have been Gregory. I don't know. Might have been Gregory. Well, the 78, I saw him out on the field clapping and taunting Daz Newsome. I'm not sure if that's what they called. You know, with the rivalry game, Tim you're going to see a little bit of talking. But. Well, a little too much. And I think the hand, I think the clapping in the face yeah. is really what they got him for that time. I don't know what Gregory may have said. Jeremy Blunt not happy with that. It cost his team a lot of yards. Yeah. Good run by Wright. So it goes all the way back to the 40, to the 40, the 47, yeah. So the play counts, second down and 15. Yards come after the play. Andre Edwards on your near side checking the play. Second and 15 for the 42, that's correct. Right, near side, next to Rodgers. Rodgers again in the shotgun. Rodgers, this time Gregory goes in motion. He goes, goes further down. Now Hargrave goes in motion. Right, shotgun, goes back to pass. He's looking, it's still no. right. It's a flag down, it's, it's, it's Gaskins be a catches hold. it. Yeah. And it's gonna be, <laughs> A play by Gaskins as he's tackled by Daniel Wright, but not before he makes a huge interception. Rodgers like he threw it right to him, but it looks like Phoebus benches. I think this was a hold back here. Yeah, it was Holding a hold. Holding against Phoebus, and that's going to stand. So Gaskins once again asserts himself today. Gaskins is having a great game. I, John Gaskins, or Johnny Gaskins. Call him Johnny Gaskins. And he has been terrific. On the play, 6, 270 holding by the offense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is an interception. First down. Well, that kills the, the drive for the Phantoms. Their best looking offensive drive yeah. of the game. It ends with the turnover, and it really was a rather easy turnover. Do it right to him. Another turnover by Phoebus. Phantom 35. We wondered if that week off would hurt them. And, uh, well, they're a little, showing a little rusty. Yeah. So Caleb, Caleb Randolph, Randolph yeah. yeah. He got the start today over Pope. Deshaun Pope out of the lineup. They haven't thrown, so he, on his side. None under shotgun. Goes to who else? Daz Newsome. He cuts it inside. Gets a nice run. He's still on his feet. 
as he's finally brought down by a, a host of phantoms. Picked up four yards on the play, though, before being pushed back. A lot, of, a lot of pushing and shoving out there right now in this game. Well, the Phantom's going to react the wrong way. They, they've they've yeah. cost themselves 15 yards already. That was a huge penalty. I know Coach Blunt, he, he certainly doesn't mind the aggression, but he does not want the taunting or the, the extracurricular stuff because that just costs his team further. It's a huge defensive stand for Phoebus. So second about six for none and the crabbers and they won't probably won't throw Ube until they have to yeah, I mean they're up 21 0 so yeah, Mike Smith is always going conservative running run base game plan none under center he calls timeout now yeah, he's taking a look at what he has a lot of linebackers in there right behind the front line for phantoms and I imagine they want to talk about throwing the ball Maybe loosen up because if you notice defensively for the Crabbers in that last play, only one linebacker. One. You had four down linemen, a linebacker, and then six Safe, safeties. with the two corners. safeties yep. and two corners. Always makes it hard to post our uh, starting lineup because it doesn't match what you normally right, would right, see. Right, right. Yeah, they bring in so many different I'm reading off six cornerbacks for the Hampton. They do play guys, <laughs> yeah. that, you know, counting the two safeties. They got six corners. And of course, we'll see the Phantoms have to go to the air more if they uh, if the ground game can't go any better than it is so far. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the young quarterback Rodgers, who hasn't had that much pressure so far this season. I mean, he's been able to throw when he when he wanted to, but in this situation, we're down by 21 points. You know, the, the aerial attack is going to be very vital. Well, we've liked Amir Rodgers. We've liked yeah. watching play. He, we know he can throw the ball. He's down here. Get uh, some words of advice on the bench with a few members of the offensive line as he watches his defense hopefully hold the Crabbers off. Second and six from the 31. None under center. Haven't seen Stevenson at quarterback yet. It's been none the whole way. Traquan Smith right behind him and then Daz Newsom. Daz Newsom. Newsom. Who else? Up the middle. Good run by Newsom. And who would have thought the Crabbers th were going to try the middle and be so successful? Again, we've seen Newsom the last couple of weeks as a running back. And they haven't, again, they haven't thrown the ball much at all in the, in the last few weeks because of Newsom being in the backfield, as you see. There's a play. Newsom goes right up the middle. That's Justin Red pushing. It looks like he's pushing the school bus. Jeez. Well, if you need a push start, <laughs> call Justin Red for the Crabbers. Red weighs in at 60, 6'5", 275. He's at right guard. 6'5", 275. Basketball player. And a good one. Fish was timeout. Taking off pads and things. Number seven, Daryl Bryant comes out. It's going to be third and three from the 33. This time, Nunn's in direct snap to Smith. He's going to break a tackle. He's going to break a couple tackles, and he gets the first down. Good play by... By Smith, Traquan Smith, has he got a direct snap? A good call by Coach Smith. A good fake by uh, none. You run Newsom, run Newsom, run Newsom, and then you snap it right to Smith. Traquan Smith. 32. Now we see the rivalry, folks. This is a Great American Rivalry Series. They're helping the Marine Corps throw a few T-shirts in the stand. You think they got an arm enough to throw one up to us? Right? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Well, they probably hit that lead. Ah. Andy Foley, our director, of course, been out there trying to get a T-shirt. Well, if he if he can get one, make sure. Oh. Uh. <laughs> All right, shotgun for none. First and ten from the twenty-one goes to Smith. Good tackle in the backfield. Real great Fetus. tackle that time. Smith could not get going, and that the tackler is still down. Is that Shadarius Horn? I hope not, because he's one of their key players. It That's is Horn. Horn. That's Horn. One of their star linebackers. They can't afford to lose him. Well, we've already seen Caleb Randolph come off limping. He's over here on the trainer table. Oh. Randolph in for Pope. Now we see Horn down. Oh, that's a huge loss. If he, and if a he leg, leg problem, which is surprising because he had Smith's leg. You thought he was just getting dragged down, but obviously he's made somebody stepped on him. Yeah, that would be a huge loss if he can't return. He's one of the, the key Components of that really defense. is captain of the squad too. Uh, that doesn't look good. He's limping. He's 
favoring that left leg. So we see Randolph on one training table. Randolph in for Deshaun Pope on defense. Oh, now we see Horn out. So a few new faces. Kareem Wilson comes in, number 34. Number 55, Keyshawn Battle Patterson, of course, the starter, and he welcomes in Kareem Wilson. Wilson, a junior, 5'11", 180. One thing about Phoebus, they can bring in, they have talent on the bench. That's no problem, but What's experience is what, is what really matters when you get into a game like this. Well, their slogan is what, next man up, next right? Next man up, that's right. So it looks like Horn's walking it off. Hopefully he can come back in the game. They really need him on defense along with Peyton Ryder, the other star linebacker. Second and 10 from the 21 for Hampton. None under center. Fakes the Newsom this time. He's going to keep. Looks like the play they scored a touchdown on. Picks up about four yards of that play. And it looks like a broken play, but it's obviously a scripted play. Well, they fake it to Smith, and I guess fifth, Smith is the lead blocker on right. that play, so they just follow him. So third and just over five yards. And most likely Phoebe, Hampton will probably go for it. And this I think they're in four field. down territory yeah. with a 21-0 lead here in the second quarter, 7.49 to go. And I'm waiting to see if they're going to break out the pass. We thought that was going to be a pass on the play action. Mm, Newsom far right. He's on the top of your screen there with the one pink wrap on the right foot. Okay, none. He goes back to pass. He's looking, and it's going to be incomplete. And a little patience, he would have had both of his receivers on the right side open. That time probably hurried a little bit. And, and none couldn't get the ball to what would have been an open receiver if he had just waited a, a, a fraction of a second longer. Good well, defensive pressure by the Phantom. That open receiver was Daz Newsom, who he was looking to throw it to. And Hampton will go for a field goal frame. We'll, we'll see what... Uh, I say go, we never know. We'll see what Valenzuela can do from... It would be, be a 35-yarder. For the kicker, Valenzuela, 6'1", 170-pounder. He looks a little taller in person. Yes, he does. Got a strong leg. Let's see if the line can give him time. Newsom's going to hold, which has got to be a worry by the Phantoms. Yeah. Right that back side, the flag looks like it was a, maybe offsides Phoebus. That was through. Prior to the snap, encroachment oh, oh. by the That's defense. Five yards. They may change. Now that takes them up just leaving about fourth and one or fourth and two for oh, the Travers. Phoebus is just beating themselves up on penalties and mistakes. It looks like Smith is thinking about it. They might, they might actually go for this. Encroachment by the so defense. Valenzuela comes fourth off and, one. and Travers going to go fourth and one. Why not? They've had the ability to pick up a yard with either Newsom or none. Coach Danny Mitchell over there on the sideline. Longtime assistant coach with the Crabber, the head baseball coach. Yeah, got a good Hampton baseball program. program over there. And a yeah, beautiful field, by the way. Have you ever seen the baseball field oh. of the Crabber? It's a hand manicured by Danny. He said his son Mitchell. is over at Norfolk State. Right? Norfolk State, yeah. assistant baseball coach over there, a superb baseball coach. Yes. Spending the last four summers with the Peninsula Pilots. So it's going to be fourth and one from the 12 yard line. Hampton's going to go for it. They give it to the the, full, the up back, and he pushes. That's Smith, I think, in the middle. And they're going to see where they let's see where they it's still Smith. Let's see where they <laughs> spot it. It looks like Smith in, and then Smith back out. <laughs> but it was Smith all the way. Trey Smith Quan got Smith. enough for the first down. 5'10", 195 pound running back, a senior. Huge, huge play on that on that penalty by Phoebus. It gives Hampton okay. another chance to get a first down. Well, the forward progress takes him up over the 10 yard line. First and goal for the Crabbers. His horn comes back in. That's a great sign for Phoebus. Shadarius Horn, 5'10", but 220. Jeez. Very solid young man, middle linebacker. Very important part of that phantom defense. Man-to-man -man coverage out here. Jackson on the Crabbers receiver. Is that High Smith out here? Or Pulley? Pulley, 24. Pulley. First and goal from the nine. This time they fake it. To He's Newsom and Nunt gets a big hit. That might be Horn. Horn Welcome it back, looked like Horn. Horn. Yes, it was Darius Horn on the, on the stop. And he seems to be perfectly okay on that hit. Yes, he is. <laughs> uh, great hit by Horn. As, again, that same play, Nunn with the fake to Newsom. He bootleg, almost like a bootleg out for the run. Well, that's one thing you can compliment all of the coaches that taught these young men football. You see that squared up yes, tackle of Shadarius Horn. That's, that's, 
that takes training. And yes. all the coaches and all these leagues around Hampton do such a fine job. I want folks to stay with us now. The mayor of the city of Hampton is going to join us, Donnie Tuck. Join us at halftime, so stay with us. Really appreciate it. We're going to talk with uh, our newly elected mayor. We know he has a busy schedule, but we appreciate it. He, he, he has a Duke hat on, though, Frank, so I don't yeah. know if that's going to work or not. Fake, fake by none as he keeps. So it could be third and uh, about seven yards for the touchdown for the Crabbers. Donnie Tuck, I, I believe our mayor not didn't attend either fan, uh, Phoebus or Hampton, so he's safe no matter which way. You can't go wrong here. <laughs> he's go wearing wrong a Duke hat. <laughs> he could go wrong with that, but uh, we'll talk about that next time we have him up. <laughs> Great crowd. It is a good crowd here on a Saturday afternoon. Beautiful weather. And his so none bring them to the line. Third and goal from the seven. 5.07 left in the half. 21 nothing Hampton. Very surprising. None. Again, fakes to Newsom. He's going to pass, and it is uh, complete. Caught. Caught, and Touched he's going to. Isn't it? Did he get in? out no. at the, around the one yard line? What That's a play. That's Traquan Smith. What a play. Oh, man. What a catch. That was turned around the ball, hit him, it bounced oh, up. Man, he, what a play. he took his time and made the catch. Almost intercepted. Steve Fryer on the camel work here. Look at Look that. Look at this. Up. Oh. And there it is. That was charity on the coverage. Oh, he hit the cone with yeah. his right foot. That should have been a touchdown. Yeah. But it, uh, uh -huh. the official doesn't have the benefit of Steve Fryer's brilliant replay, camel great work. Play. Yeah, great shot, Steve. You know, Steve gets any closer, going to have to put a helmet on him. That was a tremendous shot of a great catch. Traquan Smith. You know, we've watched the Crabbers now, the third game we've, we've broadcast the Crabbers, and, you know, we, we thought we'd see him run more, but we've seen Newsom more and more in the running game. But Yeah, he actually is the one who caught, caught, catches the pass. So it's going to be fourth and goal, a little, a little, what was it, inside the one. So just a little bit. A little bit around, yeah, right around the one-yard line. And then I'll remind you about the Hampton offensive line. So this is where Shadarius Horn and his linebacker mates for the fans are going to step up. 21-0, yeah, Wu Bay this here. This is huge. This is huge. It is a big play. I mean, it's, they go down 28 nothing with the way the Hampton defense is playing. They, they could be in, in bad yeah, shape. I want to look. Uh, the, crowd, uh, the Phantoms have given up very few points this year. Uh, again, no more than eight points in any game. I think 15, that was against Wilson 22, the first game. 36 points they've surrendered all year long. Quick math brought to you by Joyce Weeks, the great <laughs> math teacher at Hampton High School. There Told me go. all that stuff. Fine. Teachers at all the Hampton City Schools, oh. we appreciate all of them. Well, they make such a big difference in the lives yeah. of these young men and, and, and the young ladies that are doing the cheering here yeah. and the band. and Soccer teacher, players, yep. as my daughter is, at Bethel. Which so important that, that our teachers, and yeah. so many of them come and support the students in all sorts of roles, you, you know, the club leaders yeah. and the band leaders and the band parents. Thank goodness for oh, band yeah, parents. for sure. But, uh, yeah, I want to commend all the teachers. They, they do a great job. They know these young men, in particular the football players, looking for something the next level. That's right. And uh, they want to get, like, like Daz Newsom, heading off the University of Maryland. And it's a Big Ten school and now. The key thing is for free. Yep. <laughs> That's very, very important. Going to school for free. All right, fourth and goal at the one. It's a huge, huge play for the Phoebus defense. Jalen Powell, the center for the Crabbers. Oh, they still run the play. Newsom gets in. He's in it. Touchdown. Touchdown, Crabber. Hampton. The uh, Phantom coaches up here trying to call timeout from the booth. Couldn't do it. And that's, that's a score by Newsom. Newsom with his second touchdown of the day. Well, I'm very surprised by this score. So Newsom with a punt return and a rushing touchdown with two touchdowns mm. today. Crabbers move ahead 27-0. Jesus Valenzuela in the kick. Wow. You know, like you said, it's the Hampton coaches. Well, they've scripted this rushing uh, running game. This yeah. is just hard-nosed Hampton football that's right now. Is, yeah. Phantoms will certainly. Page out of the Phoebus book. They really are. Venezuela goes for the extra point. This one is going to be good. That's the balance way that we've seen yeah. most of the season. It's strong leg ahead. So the Crabbers move ahead 28 to nothing with 4.13 to go wow. in the 
a second Ooh. quarter. And think about this. Who would have thought? Bay. Who would have thought this? One more, one more uh, touchdown, and, and you got a running clock in the second half, wow. which I can't imagine anybody would have forecast that. Here's the play. Newsom following oh, Smith man. in. Right behind, that's Justin Red's side, the right side there. He might get some, some new offers as a running back. I mean, I'll tell you. There's a Hampton band. Um, good to see both bands here. Oh, Always yeah. fun. It's great. Makes the atmosphere so much fun. There's uh, Alan Bieber, the intern, is on camera tonight. Yeah. I mean, today, I'm sorry, this yeah. afternoon. Despite what Andy talks bad about him, we, uh, yeah. we, we like him. Yeah, we like him. The kick it hand warrior volleyball player. Okay, uh, so Allen up with us. Nat Braxton on the other side mm -hmm. up top, and then Steve Fryer on the field and the cameras. We got a good crew every game. We'll go through those guys, introduce you to them as we do every game is a uh, few minutes now. All right. There's the kickoff as you see Allen. I'll call him Allen the intern. The Allen's kickoff with a, with a good kickoff. It's going to go into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. Well, there's it. Lake, what? He's all of a sudden gotten stronger, Wu Bay. Yeah. We, first kick a little bit off today. You know, we joke about the, the coaches trying to find a kicker going to the soccer team. You know, that, that recruiting that recruiting deal is tough one because, you, you know, a lot of these soccer players don't want to play. But you look at the benefit that he, they're getting out of well, you, know, you can uh, almost getting a good recruiting person to get a, a kicker from the soccer team my father who has uh, been a crabber fan for years and years has, has, has shouted from the stands many times over many years get a like, soccer player <laughs> crabbers of course the home of mike Houston, one oh, of the yeah. best kickers played in the nfl that's right uh several good kickers one of the johnson boys alan johnson was a good kicker bolo max over at Bo State had a great career. yep a division one player now. skylar hutchinson yep so Skylar just uh, over the summer. Looks He's good. He's out of Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech yeah. Right, yeah. It's another soccer player. All right, Rodgers. Let's see if he can, uh, Phoebus can get something going here. It's a jet sweep to Andre Jackson. Good play by Jackson. He picks up almost nine yards on that play. That's a good play. And a little after the push. That's Jackson with the push. And that's going to cost the Phantoms 15 as the uh, well, tackler hung on to his ankle a little long. Jackson hard to bring down. And that time he's going to have to. Let's see what they call. I think they're going to call it on the Phantoms. On Hampton. Oh. Boy, they call that one. That's after the discussion because yeah. there's no question it wasn't called until the shove. But that's going to be called against the crab. The tackler hung on to Jackson. Foul. Well, they always get the 15 yards. Well, they usually get the second the guy. Down. That time they had a discussion and they got the cause of the problem. Let's take a look at the replay yeah. here. It looks like a, cra a Hampton Crab was, was on Jackson's leg as he cuts in the middle here. Well, it's a good tackle. And then it's, yeah, it's Dan Newsom had had his ankle and there's a shove, and I'm stunned it wasn't called on Jackson because that's usually the yeah. culprit is a second, second man. Second, but, yeah. but first down and 10 for the Phantoms. They pick up a, a good 15 yard penalty, putting them up over the 40. Rodgers looking at his wristband, calling the play. 15 yard penalty. Jackson in motion, goes far side. Rodgers fakes the right. He's going back to pass. He's got Hargrave, and it's intercepted again by Hampton, and he's got room. And you got to be kidding me if he scores. No, he gets tackled no. by Jackson. Yeah, that was that oh, was just a, as Jaquarius Bellamy, who yes. I said to you before the game was going to be a big part of today. Wow. We've been waiting for him to show up offensively. That time on the defense makes a grab. And Jackson wide open about yeah. eight yards from the line of scrimmage, he and open. he just missed him. A lot of shoving and pushing this game. is going to have to settle down because it it's not doing the Phantoms any favors. Yeah, they're getting uh, they're getting frustrated. But, he's, again, he's a young quarterback. You see Coach Blunt talking to him, and as you, you're right. Jackson you see was, Jackson right there yeah, short of the over, 50. Yeah. They, they try to, to go long, yeah. but not long enough. And everybody for the, the Crabbers, again, with, with six guys yeah. that can be listed as cornerback, mm. covering <laughs> every inch of the turf. Uh, beyond beyond the first down marker. Here comes Hampton on offense again. Second interception from Rodgers. Hampton gets it first and 10 of the 41. Nunn's in the shotgun. Gets it to Smith. Smith has room up the middle. There he goes. Has room up the middle. He's going to have an opportunity to score. He's tackled down inside the 20. Well, Ooh. great blocking by the middle part of the Crabber line. Tackle there by 
That was a number 27. That's Caleb Randolph back in the game, I think. It was oh, Randolph. Man. Good to see him back because he had come off with a bad ankle, I believe, and they have him all retaped. He's filling in for Deshaun Pope this yeah. afternoon. Mm. Pope, a tremendous senior uh, cornerback, out today. So it's going to be first and 10 from the 12 as Hampton is driving down for another score. 315 left in the second quarter. None in the shotgun. Goes back to – actually, he fakes to Smith and keeps it, and he's still on his feet. That play has fooled Wu Bay three times yeah. today, but it, you can see why, because it looks like none is – Paisley picks up a library book and starts to read, and then you realize it's the ball, and off he goes. And another thing is they haven't run that all year. No. <laughs> they, this is the first time we've seen the quarterback keeper. What do they call that? The distracted quarterback yeah. play. And that's called fool the announcer play, too. Yeah, that's a good running play by the Crabbers off official timeout. Very, very shocked at oh. what's going on today at Darling Stadium. As you see the replay You'll see the play here. here. You'll see... Oh, good for him. And he just he pauses just long enough for the hole to open up. Gregory, a little late to the party there, but comes in to participate in the tackle. See, Jonathan Gregory trying to do a little bit of everything right now. Yeah. He's a, a big safety. Good-looking kid, man. He's yes, he is. There's another one that the Division One guys need to take a look at. Yeah, for sure. 6'3", 195-pound safety. Could play corner, if you ask me, in the, in the next level. So it's second Even and five from the seven. None in shotgun. This, this time he goes to Smith, and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Purdy. Good tackle. Well, real good play by the Phantoms D. That's the first time they've jumped that play. It's Juan Purdy, six foot one ninety junior, as he gets behind the line of scrimmage to make the tackle on Smith. Traquan Smith. Third by eight for the Crabbers. Maybe we'll see another pass. We don't want to. We don't have too many in a half. <laughs> well, we had one, right. two from hand. The one was incomplete to Newsom, and one to Smith. That's right. So. But uh, let's see here. It's going to be third and eight from the ten. Newsom gets back He's in the game in the, the backfield. backfield. Yeah. With a pulley near side. Newsom cuts it outside, and, and this that's where hand track me with that's Gregory. And oh, a horse no. oh Oh. No horse collar tackle called, which. Was, was, was I'm surprised. Jonathan Gregory with the tackle. That was a great foot oh, race man. between Gregory he showed his speed on and that play. Newsom, obviously first team Peninsula District. Oh, for sure. Players, and you can see the speed of those two young yes. men. And crashing into some young lady down there. Hope she's Coming okay. right at you, Steve Fryer with the camera. But here's Steve. the speed of Gregory getting and up to the I don't have no play. idea oh. why that's oh. not a horse collar. As many as we've seen called. But Gregory, those big hands grabbing the shoulder pads, we'll call it that, and pulling down the player. Fourth and uh, about six. Fourth down. Well, we mentioned Jonathan Gregory before the play. He's doing just about everything. Here comes Valenzuela. And like you said, some Division One schools need to look at Gregory. Oh, absolutely. So 28 nothing with a minute 41 left here in the first half. Mayor Donnie Tuff's going to join us for our halftime conversation, so stick with us during the halftime. We'll take a little break and then come back and introduce the mayor. And by now, a familiar face to most of us here in Hampton, been on council a number of years, the elected mayor in May, started in July, and is off and running in that role. And he's a avid sports fan, so we uh, had to get him up here to talk what sports means to the city of Hampton. Well, I was going to say he's an avid history fan, too. He's at all the Hampton history programs. Yeah. He likes, you know, with 400 and some years to cover, he's got a lot of events. There's Steve Fryer down there. You see Steve lining up for another good camera shot. There it is. Nice. You see the Phoebus coaches, head coach Jeremy Blunt, TJ Shields also in there. It's going to be fourth down, Frank, and eight from the 10. 141 left in the half. They're going to kick it. They're going to go for the, the three points for Venezuela. And like you said, he's on his game today. He's kicking really well. He's getting stronger as we go. Let's see, he's on that odd hash mark. Last time I watched my Virginia Cavaliers kick this thing, he hit it about 20 yards left, <laughs> and he was closer. <laughs> They've got a couple wins. They, they're they playing real, real well now. It took Bronco Mendenhall a little while to get him in order, but it looks like he's got him heading the right direction. So Valenzuela out of the hole to Dez Newsom. Center for the Crabbers is Elijah Conliffe. Looks like he is he going to hike it or is it going to be? No, it may be 
Powell. To Venezuela. Gets a good snap, and that's going to be good. Good. Looked like it was almost kicked it out of the park. That's good. So Hampton adds another feature to their game plan. A good field goal is 31 0 Crabber here with a oh. minute 36 to go in the first half, and a very shocked and silent Phoebus crowd on this side Whoa. of Darling Stadium. I'm shocked and quiet as well. I'm very surprised well, by this score. I mean, but Phantoms have beaten themselves. They beat so themselves. Far. Two special team touchdowns, and I thought I. I mentioned that early on. If Hampton scored on special teams, that would be a key in this game. Newsom with the punt return, awesome play, and then the block punt, and then uh, and then the and first then the drive touchdown, yeah. just drove down the field, which really surprised me. I think that set the tone for the game, Frank, with that drive, the it first, did. first position. And running the ball down the, yeah. right down, up the middle. And Hampton not passing again this week uh, really, really shocks me as well. But again, that's why you play four quarters. That's why you play two halves. Right. So we'll see what happens in the second half. Phoebus has been a second half team, so we'll see what happens in the second half. They have been. But and, we uh, still have 136 left in this half, so maybe Phoebus can get something on the board before it, they go in the half. It would help to give switch the momentum a little bit. Crabbers right now with their foot on the gas. Valenzuela to kick, east to west. Venezuela. Great oh, kick again. Team. This time it's that's gonna be Jackson. That's gonna be Jackson, the playmaker. Let's see what he can do. He has room. Good tackle. He's bounced off a tackle. Great tackle by Hampton. That uh, Keontae Stiff. It's like number 21, Keontae yeah. Stiff. Yeah, Stiff who had, had bounced off him and then turned around and grabbed him again and brought him down. Great tackle because he could have went outside on the far end and, uh, and taken that for extra yardage. What's well, the Phantoms' uh, worst field position of the half? Oh yeah, starting from their own 23, it looks like. So Rodgers, the young quarterback, has thrown two interceptions. Blunt gives him a tap on the fanny to show he's got his full support. Well, they have full support of him. They've already moved McNair to, to wide out, so they said that Rodgers is going to be the guy the rest of the way. The junior, like you said, is only his third start. Well, the one thing, he's got all the physical attributes you yeah. want out of a, a good high school quarterback. Very tall, good, strong arm. Now it's going to be up to him to find his spots. Yeah. He's got the strong running game. Phantoms will not go away from that. They'll try to establish it here, even in the last minute 29, so they can go in the second half. Shotgun, right. Goes to draw mm -hmm. to, to Daniel Wright, mm -hmm. and Hampton's all over it. Well, the coaches up here call that. We can hear the Hampton coaches on one end calling that draw from uh, before it even the ball was snapped. That's called good. Good preparation during the week, yep. watching film. As I need to see. Well, it's good to see Isaiah McNair back in the lineup. Yeah, he just he came was out. He was, yeah, it's good to see him back on the field for the Phantoms, a very important part of their offense, regardless of position. Just a loss of two is going to be second and 12 from the 22. You see. Uh, well, the one thing you see Jackson. is Cameron Laporte, number nine for yeah. the Crabbers who's outweighed by his line mates by 100 pounds a man, <laughs> and yet plays very well up there. Right goes up the middle. Right on the back of the running yeah. back, Cameron Laporte, 6'1", 192. That's right, not finding much running room, but he gets, looks like a gain of five on that run. Maybe his best run up the middle so yeah. far in this game. Here's a play here. And play Laporte right on his back. One of the linemen at his feet. Good combination tackle, but not before the pickup of about seven that time. So as the clock ticks down, Phoebus looks like they're going to run one more play, or will they? Nope. They won't run Coach it. Says don't. So, and so the Crabbers going to go in the locker room with a 31-point lead, 31 to nothing. As the Phantoms have given up 36 points all year long, give up 31 here in the first two quarters against the Crabbers. Wow. So we're going to take a break here at Darlin Stadium. When we, when we come back, we'll have the mayor, Donnie Tuck, with us. Stay with us. Hampton leads this one. 31 nothing with the Phoebus Phantoms. See you in a few minutes. Well, welcome back to Darlin Stadium on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. The Hampton Crabbers lead this ball game 31 to nothing over the Phoebus Phantoms. It's a rivalry game, and we are very lucky to have a special guest with us, the mayor of the city of Hampton, Donnie Tuck. Welcome, Mayor Tuck. 
Thank you very much for the invitation. It's been about, uh, I think, 44 years since I've been a part of a high school football broadcast and about uh, 41 years since I've been a part of a college football broadcast. This is kind of new. Well, it's thrilling, thrilling to have you up here. Very good to have you. You've been in the mayor's seat now for a few months. How are things going down at City Hall? I'm enjoying it, and I think things are going very, very well. Of course, you realize we had um, Hurricane Matthew last weekend, but we did a good job of recovery. Uh, we were very, very blessed not to have the same amount of damage that they had on the south side. I was over there uh, on Thursday with the governor and mayors from Norfolk, Chesapeake, and Virginia Beach, and just uh, severe damage over there. In fact, in Chesapeake, the mayor said he had about two and a half feet of water in his house, and they were so unprepared that very few folks in Chesapeake have flood insurance. So um, we count our blessings over here. And well, then you get such a beautiful day like today, and you almost forget about what happened last weekend. Well, very lucky on that. We'll be we'll talking about the beautiful yeah. day, and you haven't been to a game in a while. What is it like to be at this rivalry game here in, uh, at Darling Stadium today? Well, I always think that games like this are great, great atmosphere. And uh, actually, as I was coming into the stadium, I, I saw a classmate of mine, oh. which you're probably familiar with, Mike Dunn, who oh, yeah. uh, came about three years behind me at Duke and was part of the state championship team here. And he talked about how um, when he was here, uh, their rivalry was with uh, Bethel and Hampton High School. And, of course, you had to get your game, your tickets probably about a week or so in advance. Right. Otherwise, you didn't get in. And um, I think it, you just look at it, you, you've got the electricity of, of the youth here. Uh, you've got, I guess, your students, your parents, and then you've even had what he called the geriatric crowd. Yeah. So uh, it's a good multi-generational event. It really is. It, it, I, I think it's one of the best reflections of our community, and we have a great community here in Hampton. Uh, have you had a chance to see any of these teams play yet this year? No, this is actually the first time for me. Um, I, I stay busy, really. Uh, Monday through Thursday, and sometimes on the uh, the Fridays, I'll kind of take that myself and my wife. Well, I'm glad you're out here today. You're seeing two of the best. We've uh, we've been able. This is our fifth broadcast this year. We've got at least two games of all the Hampton schools. We've been real impressed with the programs. Well, I think what you do is tremendous. I don't think very many communities have the benefit of the doubt of a of a station that covers their games, and and that's something spectacular in itself. So if individuals cannot come out to the games, they can always tune into the cable t channel and, and watch their games. So I think it's, what you're doing is tremendous. And of course, I catch a lot of the former games on the uh, on the cable network. So I just think that's spectacular. Well, we're very fortunate this year. We have them showing on YouTube. Yeah. Ube and his crowd have done a great job. Andy Foley is a wonderful director for us, and we're able to get these games out for folks that can't get here today. Well, I'm enjoying actually watching your monitor. It's almost better than HD. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think this this brings to the community to City of Hampton? Just the, you know, going starting when a lot of these kids are playing in, in the youth leagues and they come up to the high school ranks. A lot of them go to college and some even pro. Well, well, let me offer this. I I did a uh, when I was working in TV. I did a story my my last year on my failed attempt to be a high school football player. So I went out and practiced with one of the local high schools for a week and then uh, went through a practice against the varsity team. But uh, my problem was when I was in about I think the eighth grade, I didn't weigh enough. In the ninth grade, they lowered the age, but I had to wait. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm, I'm driving home last night, and I'm watching these little kids, probably about four or five years of age, out there on the football field practicing. So, you know, I, I had the desire, but as I got older, I didn't have the size to try and be out there with those big guys. But, hey, I'd have been great in the rec leagues. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't want to be out there today. We have Elijah Conlon out there. He's 6'5", six, 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 yes. Well, 6'5", with his shoes off and th squatting a little bit. Yeah, I don't yeah. have a roster, but I look number 70 for Hampton. He's a big oh, fellow. Justin Red, yeah. And, and he's the reason why I didn't play in high school. Well, I'm going to tell you, if, if you're ever in the cafeteria with Justin Red and Elijah Conlon, please go in front of them in the line because you're not going to get anything else to eat. Uh, we're glad to have you up here. We're going to do a few highlights and let you stay with us while we go through the highlights. Yeah, Andy, sure. you We've got a few of the, the plays in the first half. What an electric half for the Crabbers. Wu Bay surprised us. I'm very surprised by the score. Um, you know, Phoebus has been a perennial, you know, state contender. And to see a 31 nothing deficit is really surprising. As you see, none. This was the, I think this was the second touchdown. Actually, That's the exactly first the touchdown, first one, the yeah. first drive on none but the fake. It set the tone for the half, I think, the, the right up the middle running game of the Crabbers. And here's the, here's the special teams touchdown I talked about earlier with the block punt. Trevion Davis on the block. And, and Gaskin, about Johnny Gaskin. had a great first half. I think Johnny Gaskin's done a little everything but served the Chick-fil-A sandwiches today. <laughs> and here's Daz Newsom again. With, with that's his, his first of three. Mayor Tuck Touchdown. Daz Newsom is committed to University of Maryland. I know, and I was sharing with Mike Dunn. I, there was a time where we used to get uh, Hampton athletes down in, uh, in the Tidewater. Right, yeah. Well, down in our triangle area. But now, I mean, I wish we could have gotten him at Duke. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that a lot of uh, you see him there. Yeah, this is an awesome place. This is it. Is right he, uh, Look at that. Yeah, I don't think you could catch him if the field was 200 yards long. So Newsom with the run back there. 
you see the town here. Here comes Phoebus. It's a good play in the middle, and then the ball comes loose. Fortunately, recovered by the Phantom that time. What's Sanders up? on the cover recovery. We're talking about where you're going after this. I know you're going to HU. A lot of these local yeah. local kids go to HU, uh, so uh, you're going over to see Dr. Harvey, I see, for homecoming. Yeah, I need to be over there. I actually started out with HU's homecoming parade, went over and saw the um, the sailing regatta, some of that, and came here, and now I've got to go over to the uh, to the football game at Hampton And you're University, carrying so. that Duke hat with you everywhere you go, I <laughs> Except over there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've been real fortunate to have uh, Mayor Tuck yeah. with us. Donnie, thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you out during thanks the playoffs. Thanks for the invitation. Looking right. forward to Thank it. You. Mayor Thank Donnie you very Tuck, much. City of Hampton. Well, folks, this is going to be an exciting second half here in the uh, in Darlin Stadium. It's a beautiful afternoon, and the Phantoms have been in the locker room. They're going to stay in there a while and talk it over because they trail it 31 nothing. We'll say goodbye to, to Mayor Tuck. And he's seeing a real good ball game. He's going to see another good one tonight. Yeah, he's going over to HU to join their homecoming festivities. That's going to, that, you know, that's, there's so much good stuff going on over in Hampton. We're, we're yeah. very fortunate here in the city to have events from high school football to college football. And, of course, just here on the peninsula with William & Mary and Christopher Newport as well with two good teams. And you joke about we're it. We see, we see these young stars early on. And I love the high school uh, talent that we have you get to see them early on before they go to college and the pros when, we can sit a little closer yes yeah you can touch them <laughs> right, talk to them right you can get and, in and uh, see them on the field there's a good shot of the crowd where we've had a great group here this afternoon again it's a beautiful and no better place to be on a saturday afternoon right here in darling stadium i wish we played more day games yeah, here it's just nice. uh, it brings back a lot of good memories and real quick before i forget i want to thank all of our halftime guests we've had during the regular season mike trebus lee martin uh, Tony, Tony Rutland, Rutland, of course, and uh, Mr. Brown over at, at, at Kickatan. Yep. Awesome addition to, to the broadcast, bringing the halftime guests up here. And we really appreciate all their time and, and effort to make time yeah, for us. Face it, Wube, we appreciate anybody that's willing to sit down with you and me for five <laughs> yeah, minutes for real, and talk yeah. a little football and talk a little Darling Stadium and a little Hampton. So, uh, we like that. The, the uh, Phantoms out now, we see the kicker warming up out there for the Phantoms. Didn't have to use him much. No, and it's it, it's going to be. I'd, I'd like to have been a fly on the wall with uh, Coach Blunt because I'm sure he's talking to different groups. The line is going to have to tighten up a little bit, and the uh, the offense has got to be maybe a little bit sharper here in the second half. I expect them to be. The Crabbers, I'm sure Mike Smith is is his basically has yelled at them as much as he would at any game, yeah. just trying to keep them focused on what they're doing and what they've done well. I mean, the old coach's speech where they leave the locker room and say it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. You, you, right. you act like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. You play, you still play hard like the game just started. So I'm sure Mike Smith has their ear in, uh, in trying to get them, keep them motivated. Well, we're lucky. I was went down and checked with uh, Kate Yanchulis, the Daily Press, and Matt Hatfield with the sports. Uh, you hear him on the radio Recruit on 757, morning, yeah. yeah. Matt reports 18 offensive plays for the Phantoms and only 15 net yards on offense. He does a great job. He do, well, there's another f feature yeah. of uh, football in all sports here right. in, the, in the Hampton Roads area where you have a guy like Matt Hatfield who's ded dedicated his life to bringing his sports in, uh, to, to the community and also bringing some of these players yes. to college's attention. Because that's, that's, that's the, main the thing. important thing that's is the that these – Young men and women who play sports from the high schools can get to that next level. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, getting a, getting a scholarship. Well, Phantom is going to get the ball here first in the second half as they are looking to close this 31 point deficit. Plenty of time left in the game, but they got a tough group to go up against. Valenzuela is teeing the ball up for the Crabbers. Back the normal. Group of characters for the Phantoms, Barry Hargrave and Andre Jackson. They had a pretty good first half, did Jackson? There's the University of Maryland commit, Daz Newsom. Newsom is uh, quite an uh, three, uh, with three touchdowns specimen. in the first half. Yes. Yep. Oh, two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. I'm sorry. The punt yep. return and the run. You're right. Yep. And Gaskins had the block punt re recovery off the block by his teammate Trevion Davis, and then the field goal by Valenzuela, who's going to do our kicking off. He of the orange shoes. Good to see the crowd still sticking around for Phoebus as the ball's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. 
And a very good kick by Valenzuela. That's his second into the end zone. That's the first two we've seen all season long yeah. kicks in the end zone, I believe. Like, like you said, it looked like his, his leg got stronger as the game went on. Yeah, I, maybe uh, he got, uh, got some instruction to kick it a little deeper. We often see high school coaches tell you know tell the kickers to kick a little short I'm, sometimes. I've never you been a fan of that. No, I'm know, not either. But it, when you see a guy like Valenzuela, you can't uh, – deny the benefit of starting the Phantoms on the 20 and not the 35. Right. So here comes Phoebus, led by their quarterback, Zymer Rogers, the 6'3 junior, number 19 out there with his big running back, Daniel, right behind him, also a junior. The senior, Jalen yeah. Holloway, the fullback, as, as you said earlier. He's got to plow the road for yes. the Phantoms. Phoebus has always uh, been known for the running game and especially their fullbacks. So let's see what up the sleeves of Jeremy Blunt here and the Phantoms in the second half. Right. Sorry, Rogers under center. Jackson in motion. Goes to right up the middle. He's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. And maybe tripped on his own foot. Yeah. I, it was hard to see if anybody's hand out there. I would guess it was Conliffe who's well, Conliffe, got the hands that big. Like I said, this might be the best, the best game I've seen him play. Well, they run right at him. They give him two on that carry. It'll be second and eight in the 22. Jalen Powell out for the Crabbers, number 75 in. That's Ezekiel Volk. Take one 300-pounder out and bring another one in. Yep. Rogers looks at his wristband, and calls Cameron, out the play. Cameron Laporte on the line looks like kind of a lost child out there. <laughs> but he is a terror from his defensive end spot. Rogers goes back to right. This time, oh, nice move by Wright. He has room. He goes up the field, and he stops. Touchdown saving tackle by Daz Newsom. Good play by Daniel Wright. Good blocking by the Phoebus offensive line. They were able to create a big hole that time for Wright. We know Wright can run the ball. They are close to the 15 offensive yards they had in the first half. There you go. A couple plays. Look at this move by Wright. Big guy can move. Good yep. cut by Daz Newsom with a great open field tackle. So Phantoms with their first first down of the second half. From their own 35. Coach Van Dyke. Very animated yes, gentleman. To say the least. Even in person, yes. even in a locker room when it's raining outside, <laughs> yeah. he was animated. Yeah, that we afternoon. know all about that. This time goes back to back to right again. Maybe a little, maybe a yard and a half in the game. That looks like number eight, Johnny Gaskins. Called his name a lot today. Yes, we have. Like an official's timeout. Gaskins listed 6'2", 170 pounder. Defensive back and wide receiver. And that time he has a sack and a fumble recovery for the touchdown. He comes in from the sideline there to come from his cornerback spot, made the tackle. Rogers again. Looks at his wristband, goes under center. Holloway and right behind him. Right, gets it again, up the middle. They found something up the middle, Frank. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe about five well, on that carry. I'll tell you what came. It looked like a freight train coming down the line. It was Tim Young, 6'4", 320-pounder. And he came and put a block on Conliffe to help his running back pick up a few yards. He blends right in with the Hampton line on the other Boy, side. The two, well, that was like two mountains meeting here on the near side of the ball. 31 nothing. Crabbers here with 10 to go in the third, and the Phantoms moving the ball. Coach Van Dyke again. <laughs> got He's got his fingers moves. painted tonight. He paints <laughs> his fingers with white out so you can better see the play call. Rogers under center. But this time he fakes the right. He's going back to pass. It is incomplete. Oh, almost a one-handed catch was incomplete. Intended for number 10. Well, it was a good effort. Corey Jackson. Yeah, a good effort by Jackson. But it, more of a defensive play by Jackson because there were three crabbers pulling – Drawing straws of who's going to pick it off. Jackson able to knock it down. Phoebus is going to punt. Jackson not really easy. You're tight end, but six foot two twenty. And he was double. He's double coverage. And here's last time we saw Daz Newsom catch a punt. He returned it for a touchdown. So the Phantoms in punt formation. Tyler Nelson. Almost, it's like a shank, almost blocked. Horrible punt as yeah. it goes out at about the 41-yard line. Yep. 
I think he saw pressure and, and rushed it a little bit. Well, that didn't go well. That's a net gain of a two yards for the Phantoms. Crabbers take over in take in, in Phoebus te uh, territory. We talked about the the field and how great it looks, courtesy of this man, Mike Smith, the real Mike Smith. He's giving away drinks. Yeah, the men in blue. Yeah. yeah, he's a Redskin fan though, so we yeah, talk too much about him. Can't uh, <laughs> can't be perfect. Has a cooler full of drinks. Hampton takes over at the 41, first and 10, 31-0 Hampton. Well, Caleb Randolph looks like he's back in at corner for the <laughs> Phantoms. Newsom goes into his own players. Jonathan Gregory's in on that tackle along with Purdy. And, and the bottom battle. of the pile there was number 84 for the Phantoms. Juan, Juan Purdy. Purdy, yeah, that's good tackle by Purdy. We've seen him a couple times tonight or today. Not much of a pickup. Did you see Newsom? Newsom just really bounced. bumped right bumped. into Smith, yeah, who bumped, bumped into, into his line. So nothing Horn, there. Horn also went on that play. Good to see him back as well. Good shot of DC. Good shot of the transfer. Yeah, DJ did. Nunn. We'll see if the Crabbers go to the air here in the second half. None. A little draw play to Newsom. Good run. He has he has room. He stumbles and well, picks did, up a first down. He did go to the air. Air yeah, Newsom. Air Newsom. Well, Newsom picks up what 14 yards on wow. a, on a run up the middle. A little delayed handoff. So none is is impressive this afternoon with the number of fakes, the feints, he the little delays. He's showing a lot of patience today in this ball game. He's showing a lot more maturity as he's getting used to his line and his teammates. Well, early on, we saw none throw it a lot more in the season, and they changed the playbook, and now they're just doing more of a run formation as, as, as Newsom gets the ball again and up the middle. Not a surprise there. Phoebus catches him and keeps him to about two-yard pickup. Maybe three. Newsom rarely falls backwards. Yeah. Well, no surprises from the Crabbers yet. They just run it right up the middle. That's all they've been doing all game. Yep, and doing it, doing it well. Second and seven from the 26. 8.22 left in the third quarter. Crabbers trying to put it over 35 and get the running clock. Last time the Crabbers had this lead on the Phantoms, I think it was 2006. None. Makes the pitch, takes it himself. Great tackle out there by the fan of number 34, Kareem Wilson. Wilson in is a sub. Charity in. also in there on the tackle. He came in for the injured. Uh, I think Jamari Sanders is sitting out here. There was another well, injury. I came, came in for Horn. Came for in a for Horn. But Horn's he, actually in there too. Well, so it, Wilson showing himself to be a talented linebacker. With the running formation that Hampton's running in, they have to put more linebackers in there. Yeah, it looks like a passing down. You have Newsom far, far right. So There's no gain. So Newsom. it's going to be third and seven from the 23. None. Shotgun, going back to pass. He's looked at, looks over, he's intercepted. Oh. It's picked off by number 12, 27, Caleb Joseph. He's in there for, he's in there for, uh, the for Polk. And there's a flag on the play, probably for a, a black, block in the back. Yep. Block. Good yep. play by Caleb Joseph. So the, it's going to come back. I'm sorry, Caleb, Caleb Randolph. Randolph healthy. He came out with a twisted yeah. ankle early. They take that him was off, huge. put him back in. But that play's gonna come way back due to the block back here. Block in the back. During the play, sideline. Sideline oh, warning. On. Again. Again is this, this drop of the flag. It's, and it's called a motion when you make a big play in high school. Yeah, and I I, I do not like that call. I especially don't like, you know, if you want to warn them, fine. After the play, After warn them. After the play, them. right. But not, not Don't drop the game. a flag, but a great interception by Randolph, Caleb Randolph, and just a horrible for, pass. Oh, good play! Not he a, was looking he was, at Pulley, and Pulley well, actually slipped. As you see, Randolph is filling in for the Desha Deshaun Pope. Yep, and made a Pope-like play on that that particular interception. That was a huge play. This could be momentum, a momentum swing for Phoebus. Yeah, again, that time none a little impatient. Threw the ball much sooner than he had to. The line was holding very well. And, and uh, Randolph read the play. He did. He read it beautifully. It's going to be second and I mean, first, first and ten from the 16. Rodgers under center. 
Holloway and right behind him. Rogers goes to right. He has a little room, but he's brought down by a few crabbers. Yep. Michael Cole along with Gaskins, Gaskins in there on the yep. tackle. Well, again, this is FIBA's football. Holloway followed by the ball carrier. And that time able to pick up a few yards. Of course, four yards of play is what you need. That's it, four, four yards of play. It's going to be second and seven. So the mistake bug hits the Crabbers here in the second half. Phantom certainly suffered enough in the first. Rogers under center. Goes to Daniel Wright, far side. He's met by some. That was number seven. Basically the whole, the whole defensive yeah. line for Hampton. Big number 75, Ezekiel Volk. Not much doing there for the Phantoms. This is certainly four down territory oh, with yeah, a 31 absolutely. point deficit. So they got two more shots at it. They need seven yards for the first down. Blunt calls a timeout as he's got a little confusion on the offense. Timeout Phoebus. So the coach, gonna he knows how important this is. Gets yeah. his timeout in. He got three of them a half. So he got plenty of timeouts. Big momentum swing. It was. Oh, that that Randolph was interception. Bad pass by Nunn. And Nunn has got to realize he's got a lot of time. Yeah. He had more than I think, uh, he, certainly than he thought he did. Rush that pass. Pulley slipped or he would have been in good good yep. position. But you almost got to play defense yeah. when you're uh, in a situation like that. Well, we got you got a couple of ballots in your hand. The Great yeah, American the, Rivalry Series gives us MVP ballots. When yes. are we supposed to turn those in? Uh, three minutes remaining in the game. We turn in the MV, our MVPs. Well, I'll and vote they, for you. You vote for me. We oh. got we got a vote apiece. Hey, there you go. And we'll see. The problem if we get is, the who big, else will vote for us, though? You know, unfortunately, it'll probably <laughs> give us that, yeah, probably give us the uh, the inflatable football to take <laughs> down or something is <laughs> yeah. our prize. You get to take it down. Yeah, I think your wife has indicated she's voting for me this game, so that's oh, yeah? good to know. Yeah. Just get my name spelled right. I'm a junior. Frank. I'm a junior. <laughs> Here go the Phantoms. Rogers in the shotgun. Like right goes in goes in uh, motion. High snap. It's caught. It's a flag on the play. And that's right in the territory of holding yeah. again. Looks like it was caught by Jackson. Corey Jackson on that play, the tight end. Yeah, and that time Daniel Wright wide open in the, fl in the, in the flat there, and I thought he might have gone there, but Rogers decides to go with the first option. You know, the slow snap hurts a little bit on those shotgun plays because the well, ball gets there, the defense is right there. See, Illegal touching. A covered up receiver touched the ball. That's a five yard penalty from the previous spot and loss of down. Oh, that's it will huge. be fourth, be fourth down. down. Fourth down and a five yard penalty. So Ooh. you come back. So it's going to be fourth and 12 for the Phantoms as they bring the stick back. That's a sharp eye. Who caught the ball? Like Corey Jackson caught it, the tight end. He's a tight end, but oh, he was covered. Okay. Yeah. So that's it, an odd line rule where the tight end has to be, to be eligible, has can't have a guy on the line further down toward the, the sideline from him. So the wide receivers have to step back. So it's going to be fourth and 12 from the 18. Obviously, Phoebus is going to go for it. Well, everybody checking their wristband, be sure they're on the same number. Rogers in motion, I mean in shotgun. Rogers goes back to pass, he's pressured, and it's going to be picked, picked off. off. Picked off by Hampton, his third interception of the night, of the day. That's 54. That's, uh, that's Juice Majette. Majette. Juice Majette with the interception. Juice Majette, a junior, 5'11", 230-pounder. You know, some of these names we talked about earlier this yeah. season, and we're starting to see them really grow up here as they get as they get more into the 2016 season. Gaskins, Majette, and, of course, we knew about Daz Newsom. Here's the pressure. Looks like they were trying to run a draw. Looks like it was going to go to Hargrave. Tyreek Coleman. Chasing but Majette the quarterback. Yep. read the play and, and, uh, and jumped on the jumped on the ball and made a great. I great think a little bit everybody read the play on yeah. that one. Is, is <laughs> Zamir Rogers had no place to go. So first and ten with the Crabbers from their own 20, uh, 23 yard line. None under shotgun under, under center this time, and the Crabbers a little confused on offense. Looks like they're gonna and they're gonna call timeout. Wow. 
as they're not don't have the play. Rushing on after the interception slash fourth down. Yeah. Huge. Good picture there of uh, Elijah Conliffe, number 55, Justin Red, number 70. The uh, Mayor Tuck mentioned uh, Justin Red, how big yeah. he was. He said that's the reason why he stopped playing football, yeah. guys like him. <laughs> and uh, again, we saw them walking around the halls of Hampton High. Oh, it scared us. Yes. Scared us, yeah. We, walk, we walked the other way. So yeah. You see the Phoebus cheerleaders. Young ladies have been out practicing since August, like the players. Many of them I understand in the competition cheer too. I know oh, yeah. uh, a couple of young ladies I know from Bethel High School in competition cheer today. Their brother out, Kellen Sullivan and Cameron Sullivan, the twins over at Bethel, ninth graders. One oh, yeah. of them a com competitive cheerleader, the other one a competitive horseback rider. And you were, speaking of which, you were uh, up 4 o'clock this morning. 4 o'clock this morning <laughs> to go and take my daughter to the to ride a horse. Uh, that's, that's what it's all about. And according to my wife, she hasn't uh, finished the day yet oh, either. Wow. And it's well, now approaching 4 o'clock. It's a long day. But another good sport for young people. None. None. This time it goes... Uh, it looks know, like it's I think it was uh, 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 Traquan Smith. Traquan Smith. Because, no uh, Newsom in the back. Newsom has, has changed his socks. He's on the far side there, and he's got the white socks. He's taken off that pink wrap yeah. that he had. Had a player down, a crabber down, That's with a cramp, it looks like, because he's already got his leg up. It looks like it's a quarterback none. Now, that's not a good sign. We'll see who it is. I think it's a lineman because I is that none over there on the far side talking with the coach. Yeah, you're right. It is a lineman. And these linemen, here comes Danny Mitchell, assistant coach, longtime assistant coach at Hampton High, very successful baseball coach and football coach, always well attended. And we're fortunate here in Hampton to be able to have the quality of sports we have. And Great Hampton athletes. Phoebus yes. football game is always a good one. So the lineman is up and over on the sidelines for the Crabbers and walking out that cramp. DJ Nunn is in the shotgun. Smith in the shotgun with him. Goes back to pass. Nunn's going back to pass and is going to be caught Daz by Newsom. Newsom. Wow. What a play. Daz Newsom. Touchdown Hampton. That time Andre Jackson right with him. And it's just a fight for the ball. <laughs> Oh, man, what a play. And so the Phantoms are driving for the touchdown. Instead, the interception. And that is Daz Newsom's and third touchdown of the touchdown. play. Newsom gets the long touchdown reception. So University of Maryland uh, has got a great player coming next year really on campus. They uh, People at College Park need to, to see. You need to get out and see Daz Newsom next year. So Valenzuela on for the extra point as the Crabbers move, move the lead to 37 nothing, which in the third quarter of a ball game under VHSL rules, we wow. go to a running clock. And I can't think of any time I've seen the Phantoms on the end of a running no, clock. I haven't. That rule's been in play 12, 15 yeah, years. Not, not in the past 15 not years. Not long no. enough that the Crab they, Phantoms had to worry about it. Neither the Phantoms no, or the Crabbers. They've been on the, the other end of a lot of them, but not on They really <laughs> have been. So Jeremy Blunt and his coaching staff over there trying to figure out how to get this back under 35 as Valenzuela waits. Wow. Time called by the Crabbers. So there's second time out for no apparent reason. Wow. In the meantime, this gives the Phantoms a little time to talk because they're going to talk to most of these guys. It play both ways. So Jeremy Blunt's going to talk to them and see what they can put together here. We may see Zamir Rogers go to the air a little bit more here. Well, I see. Uh, I, I, oh, you do see. Oh, Isaiah, I, I, McNair. Isaac Mc, uh, Isaiah McNair is warming up. And if you remember the Lake Taylor game at Harbor Park, Frank, that was the last time the run. That was. was. And that was not the cold game that they won. No. That was the one in one. Here's a pass. And you'll see Newsom just out. Maneuver oh, Jackson. And then and then Gregory and came over do. to help too. They took each other out really yeah. as Jackson couldn't hang on to his ankles and noose them all the way down for the touchdown catch. Wow. 
But we'll as far see. as against Hampton, it's never happened. But yes, they have the Harbor Park game. I think it was 54 to nothing, I believe. And that was a surprise to all of us. Yeah. We're just not used to seeing Phoebus on the other end. You no know, trail. Trail as much, yeah. So the Phantoms are going to regroup here as they wait for Valenzuela to try the extra point. Another flag on the play. Yep. Dead ball, illegal substitution. 12 players on the field for the defense. Second 12 man penalty against the Phantoms. Well, when you trail 37 0, you may want to trust in 12 minutes. Illegal guys substitution. Out. That penalty is declined. Didn't catch Price up. Point. Didn't, weren't able to get it. So. All right, the 12th man comes off. Valenzuela awaits the snap. Oh, and Newsom with the bad snap is going to try to still run try to get in, and he's going to. And again, it looks like he got the cone, but no, they call him get not in. to get in. That's a tough play. Great play by Gregory. Gregory, the one that Gregory, that he and Newsom have run that corner twice now together, and you see the speed of Jonathan Gregory. Yes, I'm not sure Newsom was really happy about the snap, but uh, yeah, you're right. Both able. times Newsom went outside. Yeah. Gregory was there for the tackle. Oh, good play by Gregory meeting Newsom's and keeping up with him stride for stride. And that's the risk also as we see Newsom run off a little slow. And of course, he's no, he's not going off as he never goes <laughs> off. But Gregory with a real good play. So even a little play like that may help the Phantoms get some points back here. They trail it 37 nothing with 5.08 to go in the third quarter. The clock will start to run. This is the only the, the problem with this rule, and I understand the purpose of the rule, but the problem is if you are a third and fourth quarter team and you happen to have a bad first half, you don't have time yeah, to come back. Time, yeah. now, you got to really score quickly and yeah. stop that running clock. The Venezuela, the kicker of Hampton. Valenzuela's kicked two in the end zone already. Let's see if he can kick a third. I know Mike Smith would like to have it in the end zone. One thing about uh, Mike, he, he's got great respect for the speed of the yes, Phantoms. Absolutely. And he doesn't want to give them a chance to build momentum with one long run back. So Valenzuela gives the wave, and here we go. This a time long it's kick. Not going to go in the end zone this time. Jackson bobbles it, picks it up at about the two. Andre Jackson has room. Middle. He goes up the middle. He's looking for blockers. He cuts back outside. He has room again. This time he goes to about midfield. And this is, he's going to be brought down. No, he's still on his feet. He cuts it up. And he's tackled hard by Daz Newsom. Slammed to the ground. And a, but, a touchdown saving tackle. And, and Jackson comes up limping. But the, the tackling was horrible for the Crabbers down the sideline. Jackson may be able to dance out of the way. I'm not sure he even touched on some of those tackle attempts. I thought he was going out of bounds around midfield, and he stayed in and kept going down the, the near side. Now Jackson's going to have to come out. Great, Van great Dyke, tackle by Coach uh, Van by Dyke. Newsom. Yeah, but he got, got slammed to the turf, and leg hurt him a little bit. Jackson's leg being looked at, but that's the momentum shifter yeah. right there. The Phantoms looking to, to capitalize on that, and McNair in at quarterback. Yeah, Isaiah I saw McNair. him warming up, yeah. Comes in, the senior, 5'10", 165-pounder. Out what? injured several weeks ago. He was the starter at the beginning of the season. So McNair in to see if he can't put a little life in this Phoebus offense. McNair under center. Goes to Daniel Wright. Near side, good tackle. No, they get, can't get him by the jersey. You yeah. got him around the leg. Almost got him. Well, they held him up. Travion Davis, but uh, right too strong a running back. Takes, picks up over five yards. So as you. So here comes, here come the Phantoms trying to put something together here with McNair at quarterback. Jalen Holloway behind him, right behind Holloway. Go back to FIBA's football. How tough is that? He's at receiver at the beginning of the season, I mean, at the beginning of the game, and then he comes in at quarterback now in the third quarter. This time it goes back to right up the middle. Good run by Wright for a first down. Clock still runs. Well, that's the one thing about it. It won't stop till they can score. If they yeah. score a touchdown, they they stop, actually yeah. field goal would do it as well. Put it under 30. 35 points. So first down for the Phantoms. Two good running plays. Good, look, 
Good look at Daniel Wright, the junior. That time Red had gone out. Red back in now. And Volk goes to the sidelines. McNair into center. And it goes to the fullback, Holloway. Jalen Holloway. That Laporte, I think, had him that time. And Cameron been calling Laporte, Laporte for yep. most of the game tonight, too. Today. Laporte and Gaskins, number eight yeah. and number nine. They, they both play on the line. Is that time called by Hampton? Wow. wow. That's their last time out. <laughs> I actually have one, two more, but. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at no, the, the scoreboard, that time I went to was called on the Crabbers, was it not? Yes. Okay. They've got one more timeout. And we got to check the scoreboard here. And timeout was called by the Crabbers, I believe. I got no. two left for Phantoms. And yeah, one for Hampton. I, I don't think Hampton has one. We'll see when we get all the numbers straight. Mike Smith saw something he wanted to talk about. With the clock running. I don't know. Right, that that's the the, the expense. Thirty seven nothing Hampton. Very surprised. I'm sure a lot of the oh, spectators are. Well the uh, Virginia High School reference, which is a very yeah. nice program, VHSL reference. You can find it at VHL VHSL reference dot com. I don't know who runs that. Yeah. that as I understand it's not a VHSL uh, related entity, okay, yeah. but uh, they had Hampton ranked number nine in the state. FIBA's was ranked number eleven. Yeah, I follow them on Twitter. They have a great, lot of great information on it. They really do. They keep a lot of historics up. But FIBA's, of course, number one in Region Three A East. And if you can keep up with that stuff, you're doing something. Kate Yanchulis and uh, Calculus Major work on that every year to try to figure out where the playoffs are. But FIBA's leading the Three uh, A. Hampton in 5A. McNair goes back to right, up the middle again. Yep. Jalen Powell Tack slowed him down early, and yep. then the rest of his teammates came and made the stop. Well, if you're Phoebus, right. you, you, you're going to win or lose with right, yeah. and, and he's picking up yardage. Question is, it's going to be a little late. Juice Majette credited with the tackle that time in the middle of the crabber. Line there, the linebacker, Majet. Clock still running here, 153 to go in the third. 37 nothing Hampton is the play comes in. Jeremy Blunt gets it in to Andre Jackson, who's going to relay it to McNair. McNair, senior quarterback, under center. Third and seven. Goes back to pass. He's pressured. He's going to try to get away. He gets away, and he throws it in the end zone, and it's going to be picked ooh, off. One-handed interception by Daz Newsom. He's got room. He can take it all the way. He's got Holloway. He moves, and he goes he to goes the center. He's going to be go all the way, folks. What a play by Daz Newsom. 100-yard return by Daz Newsom oh, for the oh, Crabbers. A one-handed interception. Oh, my Lord. Wow. A one-handed interception. Four wow. Four deep in the end zone. Wow. 103. I stand correct. 103, says Jim, the PA. His fourth touchdown Listen. today. And I'm sure we have that on tape. DJ Durkin in Maryland, you got yourself a great player. Yeah. I'm right at, out of the 757 here. Yeah, I'm going to talk to uh, Fuente and um, uh, Bronco Mendenhall because they got to do better than that. Daz Newsom, yep, yeah. one hand. Well, that's, that's easy. I, I, I no think the to. MVP ballot has already been yeah. <laughs> decided. Well, so do a lot of the Phoebus fans as they get up and start making way to the yeah. exit. After that play, wow. Well, that's just – that, in a nutshell, shows you what an athlete is. Now he's going to come out and hold again. Please oh, tell me man. he's not going to hold. Yeah, he's going to hold. <laughs> uh, he's going to sell gonna popcorn. Hold, and, yeah, and, and carry the drinks out. <laughs> he's going to send him to start the bus. Wow. Minute nine to go here in the third. The clock does stop. And – Phantom still trying to put enough men on the field. Time called to save him a 12 man on the field penalty as he gets sent off. And despite the diving attempt by Peyton Ryder, the kick is good. And the Crabbers move ahead 44 to nothing. Two big plays by Daz Newsom. The well, punt we'll return. Take our ballot. I think we can probably fill out our ballot. Here's the, here's the, here's the replay here. Watch this. 
It's Rogers. A lot of pressure here. That's Laporte, That's Laporte. chasing. Laporte. Yeah. Throw him in. You see Newsom eyeball it, reach up with one oh hand and pull goodness. it down. Well, it's Odell and, Beckham that and, what, and once he got to the once he got in the open field, I, he, I look at the high step. Once he got here, it was, it was that over. That was, was an over. amazing play in the yeah, sideline. It was over. Good effort by the Phantoms to to catch him, but you're never going to catch him in the open field. Wow. Well, mm. next time I'm gonna I'm gonna have to boo Mendenhall when I'm in Charlottesville yeah. and say I don't know how you missed that. How'd you miss him? Yeah. Well, Cream rises to the top in these big games, and they, and Daz Newsom came to play. There's a good picture of him. You see Kevin Davis, yeah. the principal. What a play! Wow. Well, Valenzuela, the kickoff again. He's going to need a, a rub down on the leg here, as he has kicked off a lot today. Yes. Let's see. We'll have to fill it in. Oh yeah, no play. <laughs> yeah. Daz Newsom, you're going to hear that name a lot in the future. So not the Phantoms day to day. Too many mistakes. Third interception by the Crabbers. Actually, that was the fourth. Fourth. Yeah. And Valenzuela to kick off yet again. So six touchdowns now <sighs> for the Crabbers. Four of them. Well, my key was seven touchdowns. Excuse me. Hampton had to score six. on special teams and defense, yep. and you know with. A, d a defensive touchdown and two special team touchdowns. That that those were the, the big plays. So Valenzuela waiting to kick. Officials have some conference on the far side with Mike Smith. Hmm. Newsom mercifully off the field for one play. <laughs> Give him a break. Short kick. Gonna be Jackson again. This right goes in the end zone. It's gonna be a touchback. No room for him to run it. No Jackson back. Let's see full speed. Andre Jackson has tried to put a little life in his teammates, but not able to do it. And it's the Phantoms with the running clock here in the third quarter. 109 to go. Wow. And uh, Newsom can get ready for his uh, close up. I almost knocked you out on that, on that interception return. I had to get up out of my seat. Well, I mean, it was just that, a great play. That, I don't think I've seen as many one-handed catches as I've seen in the last five years, but well, a we, one-handed interception backing up. Well, we saw Grandy have, have one. Yeah, he fell out of bounds. But, Keith Grandy at kick but Newsom, the, agil the agility to, to get the interception, stay on his feet, the balance, and then to go down the field. You and me, we have been yards. lucky to catch the ball. Oh, we'd have been lucky to put a hand a, on the ball. We'd, we'd have taken a knee quickly, but yeah. not. Yeah, there's Newsom. Newsom back in, in his safety spot. He's starting to look more like Ronald Curry in that yes. safety spot as he drops 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. Where's number five? The same number as Tyrod wore in high yep. school. Tyrod Taylor, of course, the starting quarterback at Buffalo. Play they were mentioned today as a contender yeah. on the radio. Got one so three straight games. So. McNair in quarterback. See if Goes he can back get the, to right. See if the right fans can avoid the shutout now as the clock is going to run right around the corner. Brought down by number eight, Johnny Gaskins. You pick up Gaskins and Laporte, eight and nine. They're, the, yeah. they're the, the smaller two on the front line, and they have done a great job. I guess they're technically listed as linebackers, but they step up and play that outside. They play that outside, yeah. yeah. They call it a, with a rush, rush linebacker. Conliffe, Powell, and Red. Red. Yeah. Well, they did three of them that weigh the much is is four. And we pick and Laporte. We we pick an MVP every game, but we can pick the Hampton line every game. Yes, I mean, we they, could. They uh. And they're getting stronger as the season goes on. McNair under center goes back to right up the middle. Good hole by right. Real good hole. Right behind Holloway yeah. and number sixty for the Phantoms. That's Raheem Saylor, the senior, two hundred seventy pounder. That's going to end the third quarter. 44 nothing Hampton. Unbelievable. Well, we knew both teams were strong. Yes. We didn't know that it would be as lopsided today because, we, we again, uh, this is not going to reflect. No. Um, I'm not going to tell you that Phoebus is not good. He's going to tell you that they had a bad afternoon. Yeah. Certainly the, the first half set them, set them back with the turnovers. The block punt. Yep. Uh, block punt and the interception. Interception, yeah. And you get behind, it's tough to get to to make a comeback against the Crabbers. Again, so, once again, great day here. It is Darling, a beautiful day uh, at Darlin Stadium. The uh, 
Great American Rivalry Series is here with us, the inflatable football in the east end of the stadium. It always, they'll have a presentation in the game. They support the Marine Corps, as yeah. I understand. Marine Corps supports the, the charitable institution behind this. And it's a really nice program. I think the, is it the Army? The Army. The Army, The yes. Army, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been US saying Army. Marine Corps, but and I think there was a Marine out there earlier with the blue. Yeah, there was. Right I I band, but, one, yeah, yeah, the Army's got there like, up there. But I want to thank uh, them for being here at Darlington yeah. Stadium. It's, it's an honor to be in that series. Yes, it is. And the Hampton Phoebus game has been a featured game for many years now. Well, looking ahead, Phantoms still have to play Woodside, don't they? The Woodside High School New Bernie is a pretty good team. They've got to play Woodside and Heritage. And Heritage. And, uh, and Heritage is that game that was rained out last week. Yes. We put it what was their bye week, November yes. 4. And I think Heritage, I mean, uh, Woodside is probably playing their best ball of the whole season right now. They are. And they always come in with a real big line. Three straight games with 50 yeah. points. McNair to Peyton Ryder, who's the fullback now. He comes in at fullback. Ryder's a, a tough, hard-nosed player. He... His first appearance against Hampton was the night he blocked for Jamari yeah. Becknell, yes. who picked up over 200 yards yeah. that night. So uh, Ryder in his fullback, giving Holloway a breather. Peyton Ryder, though, that night I was on the field and got to watch him coming yeah. at me, and he was very impressive. But with Holloway being a year older, you let Holloway, and he was a terrific fullback. I mean, they're, they're blessed to have two. Ryder is a great linebacker and a great baseball player as well. If he yes, he is. So the Phantoms going to try to open up a little bit here. McNair, second and ten from the 34. Daniel Wright, single setback. Goes to goes to Wright, and look at the speed on Hampton. Oh, actually, Wright gets mm -hmm. away from it. He has some some blockers, and he he's tackled by Daz Newsom and around the 40, Cameron Stevenson. 45 yard line. Yep, and none of the big men could hang on to him. They could get to him, but he couldn't hold on to him. The speed of Hampton on the containment, but he right found a way to get away. You know, the, the, the really sad thing about the reorganization of, the, of, the, of, the, of this, of the league, and we will see the run here, one bump, two, three, and then it's going to be up to Stevenson and Newsom. Yeah. The sad thing is that before when these two teams played, the loser would have a chance to play them again in the right. playoffs. And with the, the division separation, based on size of school, Phoebus is a 3A, Hampton is a 5A, and this is it. They won't see them. But fortunately, uh, we here in Hampton get to watch both teams as they the make playoffs. their way through the playoffs. Both can represent they, the city, yeah. They can both play here at Darling just on different game, uh, different days. McNair goes back to right. This time he goes up the middle. Great tackle. Yeah. That just lifted – by the helmet of number 22, Karik Grogans. We haven't called his name much tonight. No, we haven't. Six foot, 212 pound linebacker. Grogan's a soft, uh, excuse me, a sophomore, yeah. Both teams with some good youth on yes. defense in particular. I think that's all across the board in Hampton. A lot well, of young, good yeah, young players. And Daniel Wright, of course, is only a, a junior. junior. Yeah. And Peyton with Peyton Rogers, 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 Rogers Ryan Peyton Ryder, who will be at the fullback next year. Hargraves is sophomore. Yep. Of course. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of Barry Hargrave today, but we will yeah. in the future. Well, he's wide open. Nobody was. Yeah. Phoebus actually calls timeout. Well, that's we've had uh, some odd timeout calling, yeah. haven't we? Uh, <laughs> so with 9.23 to go here in the fourth quarter, 44 nothing Crabbers. Wow. Crabbers, on the other hand, have defeated Woodside. They lost to Heritage, but it was the second game mm -hmm. of the season. They started a, a week later than the other nine in what the old Peninsula District. And I got a call this week from a good fan and a neighbor of mine who said, there's no longer a Peninsula District. Well, that's true. Yeah. But the only way to identify a team in the Commonwealth of Virginia is by saying what district they were right, in. Right, right. So you know the PD. Still, people because still have Because if PD. you want to say Conference 10, you know, Zone 12 <laughs> on the left, that's this conference and the other conference, and they all have these these plain names. But, um, uh, you know, the Hampton got nine of the Peninsula District teams started that first week in August. Uh, Hampton was going to play that last week, November 4th, which right. is the week before the playoff start. Now Phoebus, with the rain out last week, is going to get to play uh, on November 4th. And I think Jeremy Blunt's going to like that because yes. he, he won't have to this did, layoff did week, lay which off. may have contributed and, and a little that, bit to today. And that's what Mike Smith, that's the reason why he picked up Churchland at the end of the year, that he won't have that rust factor. 
Uh, Churchland, Get those poor guys usually oh, yeah. they draw they usually draw Phoebus or Hampton yes. in in one of their up years and it's it's not pretty. Right up the middle, he's tackled right away. Yep, that time a good tackle by the end. I'm going to guess Laporte. No, it's number 77. That time Tariq Coleman for the Crabbers. Coleman, six one two twenty five junior, or as we call him, one of the little guys on the front line. <laughs> Interesting, Hampton loses most of their bulk up front. They really do. First year, and, and as we heard Mike Smith say a couple of weeks ago, the biggest group of linemen he yeah. may have had in his 46 years yeah. with the Crabbers. Yeah. But as he, he, he reminded me quickly thereafter, he, he didn't think they were the best. Of course, he never thinks no. that anybody <laughs> that he has at present is the best. He never does that. So Isaiah McNair gets assembled here on offense for the Phantoms. Third and seven. Still We're looking at, look at Coach Blunt. He and Wright are both, and so is Daniel Wright. Oh, calling an audible here. Daniel Wright, single setback, third and seven. Going to go to Wright again. Justin, Justin Red is all Reyes. over. He breaks that tackle, though. He keeps on his – oh, good run by Wright. He stays on his feet. Gets tackled around the 30-yard well, line. That's pretty much how you see it. When, when you see Wright run, he can shake linemen pretty easy, and he's done it now twice against a really good group of linemen. But they are not able to hang on to him. Watch this Red, who Red is was right way there. up there with him and just couldn't get a hold of him. Nice stiff arm by right. Yes. That time, Laporte misses. Somebody else misses there and brought down by who is that? Is that Cam, Cam Stevenson, Stevenson yes. who's been the one guy that's been able to bring him down the open yeah. field. The former uh, the starting quarterback who's seen more time on the defensive side and at receiver. He's done well. Jeremy Blunt. Last-minute offensive adjustments here as the Crabbers switch out. Conliffe back in. And Ezekiel Volk out. Two Volks on the squad. Everybody looking at the wristband as uh, McNair calls in the play. Well, McNair's run the offense pretty well here. Let's see if he can get, pick up another first down. He's got one there. First and 10 from the 30. Hayden Ryder in motion. McNair goes back to right. He goes up yep. the middle again, but this time... He has a wall of crabbers. That time he ran into the wall, and the wall didn't give. <laughs> Still picked up a couple yards. I mean, Wright is a solid running yeah, back. Yeah, he is. 225 is probably a generous. Reminds me of Elon Lewis. He's a little taller than Elon Lewis. But yes. Same running style. Elon Lewis, remember, went to Virginia Tech. Yeah. And he was nearly unstoppable. He was a 2,000-yard man in his career. Oh, no, for the year, wasn't he? Yeah, 2,000 yards, yeah. Injuries just... The real is he ran career. straight up and yeah. down. He was built, built. He was a heavy running back, like Wright. Well, I know you remember Antoine Womack, who played oh. here, went to Virginia, was a great running back. Sure could and remembered him well. And the, the list of great running backs goes on and they on. They really do. McNair under center. Phantoms trying to get the board. Running clock down to six minutes to go. In Fake, this time he goes. He fakes the right, and McNair's in trouble, and he's going to get sacked by. Oh. It looks like Cunliffe was there along with Gaskins yep. and Laporte. So Cunliffe making his presence known again. Time didn't work. McNair all disrobed on that play. Every time Phoebus goes back with the play action, Hampton is right there. They really haven't had a chance. to. They, they only have a few seconds. And you, you see, see Cunliffe, the, shadow comes in the picture before he does. I can only imagine what he thought when he saw Cunliffe running at him. Uh, find a receiver quick. <laughs> find a receiver quick. Time so, called uh, here. It's like a Phoebus might have called, called the timeout. 44-0 yeah. Hampton. They got to get McNair's jersey back on. There's a piece of equipment down. <laughs> well, the good news for Phoebus fans is McNair looks healthy. Yeah. Rodgers, you, you got to give the, the first-year starter a, a, a bad game, and that's, that's what he had. But the Phantom's future looks good. Well, the better news is, as far as this year, is I don't think they'll drop, even with this loss, in terms of the... In, in Division 3A. In the 3A, no. they won the 3A no. uh, conference. So, no. you know, nobody wants to lose, obviously, but this, this loss won't really hurt them going forward into the no. playoffs. You know, when Phoebe is playing 5A and 6A and 4A teams the whole season, it helps their power ranking. Oh, it does. And it helps them go into the playoffs. And that game against Heritage now, yeah. at the end, Heritage also 5A, I think. Right? Heritage 4A. 4A. Oh, my goodness. 
So shotgun for McNair. Three receivers second to the near. And, second and 20 at the 40. It go, it's tipped, intended for yeah. Edwards. Hit Conliff in the head. What was, and I didn't see who reached up. Might have been 77 Coleman. But it was intended for DeQuandre Edwards. We'll see it here. Yeah, Col Coleman got a piece yeah, of it. Yeah, right on the end there. Got his hand up. Haven't heard much of Col Haven't heard much from uh, Edwards either. He's another kick and tan transfer. We had a, a big game earlier in the season. Yeah, just nothing much has worked for the fan. Probably the lowest offensive yardage output in uh, since that yeah. game against Lake Taylor yeah, several years ago. And again, Hampton didn't do anything <laughs> anything different. They no. Just no, they just made big plays. They ran their game plan and, and could get away with it today with the straight, hard nose running and then some dazzling plays from Daz Newsom. McNair. This time Bailey goes in motion. Far side. McNair, shotgun, gets the snap. More pressure on Hampton. Looks like we're going to try to run a draw. It's taken oh. away by Hampton. Well read as Jackson tried to get it. And looks like Majette again yeah. was on the play. Juice Majette wearing number 54 for the Crabbers. Read that all the way. He'd been there a second earlier. It may have been an interception. Yeah. As he, he had it, had a bead on the receiver. Painful reception by the Phoebus receiver. Are they going to have to turn the ball over now? They haven't had any room all day to make a play. Well, out come some of the starters. There's going to be a few new faces for the Crabbers on the offensive line. As the uh, Great American Rivalry guy, I was going to ask him if there's anybody that disagreed with us. Yeah, we, uh, he just left. We would have. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure nobody has. They're going to pick an MVP. We'll pick one for both squads as we do. Daz Newsom, of course, has got to be our MVP for oh, the yeah, absolutely. Crabbers. Phantom's a little tougher to sort out today. And that's why our open analysis, Frank, isn't hard. You no. get the ball to your playmakers and right. they'll make plays. The offensive line, obviously, is doing a did a great job, and they, Hampton's defense put a lot of pressure on both of the quarterbacks for Phoebus. Well, Travion Davis in the backfield with his Stevenson. with Traquan Davis and Stevenson's in the Stevenson quarterback. In quarterback. Yeah. Well, a little extracurricular activity earns a 15 yards more for the Crabbers, I believe. The the flag thrown over on the Phoebus side near Jonathan Gregory's feet. I don't think it was on him. We'll see what the call is. Clearly, at a little extracurricular. Face mask. face mask. Okay. So another penalty in the Phantoms. Personal foul, face mask against the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. Out goes some of the starters for the Crabbers. Elijah Conliffe comes out. Great we, game today, too, for him. It really was a good game for him. And he's, he's, they play, they've played well individually, I think, up until two weeks, a week ago. When they yes, played Kikatan, yes. I thought they played real solid, but it's yeah. hard to tell when you're up that much. Right. But they put 44 on Phoebus. Yes. And they put 48 on Kikatan. Right. Today's a much tougher con uh, contest on the line, and I think the Hampton line is starting to gel at the right time. Because they are five giant men on this offensive line, and they, when they play together, they're going to be hard to stop. Stevenson under center. And... Looking at some of the 5A teams, Frank, it's wide open. It I is. Mean, it's no fair, no uh, clear favorite. As Stevenson, Stevenson goes outside. There's that play again. That yeah. fake you and me. That, that was a brilliant play by Stevenson. And they've run that. That's four times a day they've run that play. Stevenson is so small, you don't even know where he is sometimes on some of the plays. Stevenson, 5'6", 151. He's a junior as well. What a great thing for Mike Smith to have is two juniors in that backfield with, uh, with with Stevenson being one of them. That was a nice pickup by them. You got a couple other guys that can come in this this lineup. They got a freshman, a freshman Khalil Gunn. Gunn. So you got some underclassmen back there to help Mike Smith rebuild. I don't think he's got another Daz Newsome sitting on the sideline, <laughs> but sure uh, he'll, find, he'll one. find one. Stevenson under center, less than a minute left. Goes back to, Dave, uh, back to uh, Smith. Yep, nothing doing there. Good stop out there by the Phantoms. Like number 74, Deontay Walter, six foot, 315 pound senior, gets in the ball game and makes a stop. Third down clock down under a minute now, 40 seconds. So we'll see if they can get another playoff. 
What a surprising result here. Didn't we really thought this game was too tough to call. I don't think either one of us knew who'd call to win, but uh, the Crabbers have done nothing but run their Crabber plays today and run yeah. them well. Very surprised. Well, certainly just surprised at the margin. Yes. Um, it wouldn't surprise if Hampton would have won, but like you yeah. said, 44 nothing is. As you see Stevenson keeping it and going yep. outside and a flag. Flag outside uh, and two flag flags there. And another flag, more flags. So we'll see mm -hmm. if, if the game's going to be, the clock is out of time. But if it's a defensive penalty, you can't end the game yeah, on a defensive penalty. But I think they'll decline it and won't they? Yeah. He's going to look like he's going to hold the ball up and say, that's it, folks. It looks like it's against Hampton. Ball game. Well, that does it. The team's going to line up at the 50-yard line and shake hands. The seniors have played their last game against uh, one another. That's always tough, Ube, to say goodbye to some of these guys that we've seen. But yeah. fortunately, you and I and the rest of you at home are going to have a chance to come out here to Darlin Stadium and watch these seniors play again. Yeah. It was all Hampton Crabbers today. Yeah. Too many mistakes for the Phantoms in the first half. Put them behind, and that was really all it, all it took. Yeah, I mean, the, the mistakes, the special teams, two special team touchdowns, Daz Newsom being Daz Newsom uh, was, was the key. I mean, Daz Newsom is electrifying as they come, and uh, we're, we're just fortunate enough to be able to see him. In well, the up, the up, and you, can, you can catch these games on YouTube. You can watch Daz Newsom make the one-handed interception return and running back 103 yards. And you can watch all our games on uh, Ham City Schools on YouTube. So the final score here from Darlin Stadium in Hampton, Virginia, the Hampton Crabbers 44, the Phoebus Phantoms nothing. Look forward to seeing you playoff time. For now, come on out to Darling and join us. For Wu Baker Bravens, Frank Edgar saying good afternoon from Hampton. See you next time.